as before, as the 6 0 start to the 2024 season has been for the Miami Hurricanes, their true fortunes for the year could be on the line Saturday at Louisville in what probably is a game against the most dangerous team left on the 2024 schedule. The Cardinals have a high octane passing game that was created by head coach Jeff Brom, a former pupil of Howard Schnellenberger, of all people, fighting for the Schnellenberger Trophy on Saturday, who refined his scheme over the years when he was in the National Football League and now has pulled it all together for his time here at Louisville as the head coach. It seems to match up pretty well against the Miami secondary that's coming off its greatest struggle of the season uh, last week at Cal. Um, a game where mental bust by the DBs and the linebackers gave up four different plays of 50 yards or more and made it a life or death struggle right down to the very end. But like the rest of the team, the path defense has had an open week to try to get better. Uh, and there's hope that we will see the best version of the Miami Hurricanes defense this weekend up there at Louisville for Saturday's 12 noon start on national television. You can debate a lot of things about this team as it sits here at the halfway way point of the season. But one thing that is absolutely undebatable is that we have not seen the best version of the Miami Hurricanes yet in 2024. We've seen flashes. The trip to Gainesville certainly uh, was a memorable experience. Uh, you have to throw out FAMU and Ball State. They were just non-competitive teams. In the other three games since, Mike has had good moments and bad moments. And now we're at the point of the season where the team should start peaking and pull it all together um, and put out its best performances here down the stretch. The King of Flirted with defeat the past two weeks. Uh, that's no secret, both games going down to the wire. It's been the same type of win some, lose some style of football that has derailed seasons here for the past two decades. The difference? Only in 2017 had Miami not lost at this point in the season, and that means the Canes now have a unique opportunity to accomplish significant goals here in the next seven weeks. We're going to talk about all of that and more tonight as we embark on a new edition of Kane Sport Live. Hello again, everybody. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com. We welcome you once again to the show of Kane's fan and the people's show, Kane Sport Live. Uh, this is your show. It'll be driven by your participation. If you would like to come on the show and you're not pre-registered with us, all you have to do is email us at kingsport at yahoo.com. You see the email address at the bottom of the screen. You shoot us an email, kingsport at yahoo.com. Um, we will get you connected to our studio, and we bring everybody on the show in the order uh, that they come into the studio. You're also invited to participate in tonight's show with comments and questions uh, in the chat, uh, and we will uh, address those as we go forward in tonight's show. Matt Shodell is going to be joining me again tonight. And then the voice of the fan, Bruce Warner, will uh, join me for the uh, second hour of the show. So we uh, you got all that to look forward to. Uh, but now let's get this party started by bringing the man himself. I can tell you guys something. I don't know how many of you guys watch our Good Morning Kings Sports show, but Matt is the Stone Crab King, all right? And um, so before tonight's show, I said, I want to be like Matt. I want to live like Matt. I want to experience Stone Crabs the way that Matt Shodell experiences Stone Crabs. So I literally went to a local seafood market, and I camped out in their parking lot until um, the driver came with the Stone Crabs that had just come off the boat. They hadn't been cooked yet or anything. And I waited while they cooked up the Stone Crabs live um, so that I could get the first batch of the new season and come home and eat them for dinner, uh, what feast it was. Now I understand why Matt puts forth all the effort that he does to go mutilate and catch his own stone crabs. Um, so I'm ready for tonight's show. I don't know if I'm ready for Matt, but there he is, the stone crab king himself, Matt Jodell. And uh, Matt, welcome back to King Sport Live. I know everybody's happy to see you. Uh, before we get to our guests uh, tonight, uh, 
talk a little bit about your, uh, you know, I've written so much all week and, and I've talked about uh, my feelings on the team and, and how I don't think they're even scratching the surface of what they can be uh, this season. Uh, give us a little bit of your uh, input on what, you know, you feel you're seeing from the Canes. Well, you know, your monologue is like the Twilight Zone intro where they say the same thing every time, right? The, uh, I don't know, the dimension of imagination. Oh, he's gone. Doesn't like what I say, so he leaves. Uh, anyway, every time Gary Furman talks, it's about... Uh, <laughs> every time Gary Furman talks... I it's, want about, to get stage. <laughs> it's about how the team can get better. Uh, every game of every year, you can point to how the team can get better. Uh, you know, maybe not in 2001 as much, but there's always things for a team to improve. You know, what I think fans want from you and from me, Gary, is specifics of what can be improved, what's not working right, and what is working right. Because what you never say is this is as good as we're probably going to see. Uh, you know, there are aspects of this team at 6-0 and that probably Miami's overperforming. You know, you listen to Gary Furman, and they're just underperforming everywhere. There's so much room to improve everywhere. Everywhere is nowhere near the ceiling. There's so much meat on the bone. I, you know, I'm, I don't eat meat. I eat stone crabs. There's there's so much uh, claw left on the cartilage. I, I don't know how I would phrase it. But, like, there, you know, I would argue that um, that there are certain areas of this team that are as good as we're going to see. And, you know, one of them is Cam Ward. I mean, you know. Gary wants to harp on his four interceptions and how horrible it is, but every quarterback throws interceptions. You know, have they looked ugly? Yes, but there's not a quarterback that's going to put the ball out there the way he does that's not going to have interceptions. And the fact that he only has four interceptions out of all his passing attempts and his 20 touchdowns, that's overperforming in an average society. In a Miami Hurricanes world of two decades, how do you complain about that, okay? Um, I would argue Mark Fletcher is running as well as we've seen him run. I think Jordan Lyle has been a huge success as a true freshman. I think the wide receivers as a core are overperforming because I didn't expect much from Sam Brown. Uh, Jacoby George, you know, has somewhat kept his head on straight at times, which is a, a, as good as it's going to get from him. And Xavier Shrepp was playing out of his mind good to the point that I think um, either Mario Cristobal or, or somebody um, said that he's the best receiver uh, in the nation. And you know what? Maybe he is. You know, all five foot nine of them. And then, you, you know, you, you turn on the tight ends tape. Is Elijah Arroyo underperforming? He's probably overperforming. He's playing as well as Will Mallory as any of these great tight ends from the past. Uh, on the defensive side is, again, where we find some issues. You know, the offensive line, you can argue, can get better. But Jalen Rivers is missing. When he's back, we'll really know, uh, you know, if that line can be great or not. Uh, I wouldn't say they're underperforming or overperforming right now. Until he gets back, it's hard to tell. Uh, the defensive line, I think, is performing up to standards. Uh, the linebackers are not because uh, Maui Noah has not been playing up to the level he can and did play it last year. And the secondary is right now a mess. So, you know, as much as Gary Furman wants to say that there's room for improvement everywhere, how they're not performing as well as they should be, it's true because everyone, of course, can play better than they are. But in terms of what the reasonable level of expectation is, I'd argue most positions are overperforming for the 6-0 and team. All right, I'm being polite, so I just took notes. Um, and that's a new one. <laughs> Who yeah, taught you that? Like, all right, so first things, no, it's not automatic that you're going to get better as the season goes on. There have been many years that we didn't see the team get better as the season went on, including in 2017 when they were 10 and 0 and then got destroyed the last three games of the year. They did not get better as the year went on. They got lucky in a few games in the middle of the season. Um, were able to keep it going for a few more weeks, uh, but then paid the price for not getting better. Okay? So I will argue... Uh, well, you didn't hear what I said. Your notes were wrong. I didn't say they will get better. I, I was responding to the hypothetical that they can get better, right? Because of course okay, they can. Everybody can get better. Right. That's that's what your point's been. Not that they, I didn't say they will get better. I said they can get better. Of course well, they can. This team will get better. And that this team has enormous upside at, in every area. Like, you go to every position on the team, and, and I walk away with the thought that they're not even scratching the surface of what they can be. And I know that that has been a big initiative in this open week for this team. 
Uh, they've tried to be very focused on improving, on uh, tightening up some fundamental things that maybe were falling a little bit by the wayside as the season went on, tightening up their schemes, figuring out what they're doing well, what they're not doing well, throwing certain things out, maybe adding some others. Uh, I'm ex you know, expecting this team to get significantly better here as it goes forward, but it must start Saturday at Louisville. Now, the other thing I just want to comment on real quick is the Cam Ward turnovers, which you wanted to slough off like no big deal um, because he's only got like, what, four or five well, of them? Well, four, that, four that were his fault, yeah. Okay. Well, based on my observations of Cam Ward going all the way back through camp and, and, and all, you know, on the practice field and now in games, the greatest possibility or probability or whatever you want to call it that I see that this team can get derailed because they're better than everybody they're playing. Um, this is a tough game Saturday on the road at Louisville, but I think Miami talent wise is better than every team they, they, they're playing and they're going to be favored in every game they play. Um, the greatest probability for this team to get derailed is Cam Ward turnovers. Uh, you know, this it almost did them in against Virginia Tech. Let's be honest. Um, the turnover at Cal came, I mean, turnovers never come at good times, but they were just coming out of the half. They were trying to rally the troops, um, you know, eliminate a deficit, and he threw the worst interception you could ever throw in your life to make the hole even deeper. Uh, it got to be 25 points, obviously. The magnificent uh, last quarter and a half bailed Miami out. Cam Ward was the man, Superman, um, you know, Spider-Man, whatever you want to call him, he was. And that's why he's one of the favorites for the Heisman Trophy. Uh, but the reason he's not the runaway favorite for the Heisman Trophy is the turnovers. And uh, people have seen those, the, you know, the, the bad turnovers that he's had. So Cam Ward can get better, too. Uh, he can. And uh, the way he can get better is not turning the ball over, you know, just with, with, with careless throws. Now, you know, the coaches are trying not to over-micromanage him. Like, you don't want to take away the greatness of his game, for sure. It's really up to Cam Ward himself, okay? They're not – the coaches are not going to derail him. He has to get himself under control. He has to understand that in the earlier stages of his career, he has not been a winning quarterback. He's been a bad team. He's been a 500 quarterback. He has never won anything in his uh, college football life. Okay. This is a very unique opportunity to lead this team to an undefeated season. If he can do that, he unquestionably will be on the stage in New York for the Heisman Trophy presentation. His NFL draft stock will be soaring if he proves that he can win and can clean up his game a, a little bit. And Miami will be in the thick of the playoffs at the end of the season. So, uh, yeah, a lot of us riding on Cam Ward, and I think he can get better like everybody else. And the last thing I'll comment on that you said is Mark Fletcher. Um, I've been a big Damian Martinez proponent. I watched him a lot last year. It's a kid that can gain six-plus yards of carry. But we're midway through the season, and it has not been happening yet here at Miami. He's only averaging four points up in the game. Damian Martinez – has got to pick it up as well. Uh, and you got Jalen Rivers coming back on the offensive line. Uh, I want to see Damian Martinez here in the second half get back to being Damian Martinez. Fletcher's going to play uh, equally as much and deserves to. You want to get into a thing over who should start? I would agree right now, based on the first half of the season, Mark Fletcher should start. But I also understand that you have to nurse Mark Fletcher through this season. He has not been healthy for an entire season, I don't think, in like four, at least four years, I think, of competitive football. Um, you don't want to go back there. You don't want to overload him. Keep him fresh. Keep him productive. You have other backs that can contribute to. We want to see more of Christopher Johnson. We want to see more Jordan Lyle. Um, there's only so many footballs to go around in that position, but I would personally like to see more guys impacting the game on offense in the second half of the season. I think it will remove – the predictability that Miami's always going to go to Restrepo in the clutch and will make Miami much more competitive later in the season when the degree of difficulty goes up and you got to play a potentially Clemson for the ACC title. And then you got to go against teams like Texas and Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State and Oregon in the play. 
Um, and with that, we're going to uh, go out to you guys again. If you're not pre-registered with us and you would like to be on the show, email us, canesport at yahoo.com. We'll get you into the studio. Come on the show. Um, let's begin tonight with our man, the Italian Stout, um, the guy that uh, you'd probably like to go out to the club with on a Saturday night. Uh, anybody calls themselves the Italian Stallion uh, without question. Uh, has a great track record with the ladies. Um, let's go to Jay and Jamie. Welcome. Welcome to King Sport Live. How are you doing tonight, my man? Oh, doing good, bud. Just tired. Just trying to finish up here at the office. I've been wanting to get on the last couple of weeks, but it just hasn't worked out and so forth with uh, connection issues and working late, unfortunately. So, but uh, but no, thanks uh, for letting me come on. So. Happy tonight. What now? We're happy to have you tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, uh, first things first, um, I want to talk about the Cal game real quick. I know it's been a couple of weeks, um, but a couple of things that I observed, and if I'm way off base, please let me know. But could you tell me how many miles it was for you to travel from Cal back to uh, back to South Florida, Gary? What is it? It's like 2,500, I think, 3,000. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, Jacoby George should have been made to walk back all 2,500 if Miami had lost that game, to be honest with you, with some of the boneheaded things he did. Uh, you, you were spot on saying he might cost us a game, and it still might happen. I hope it doesn't. But, I mean, you've got to be smarter than that. And same with Isaiah Horton uh, down the street from me in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I mean, he has got – you cannot lose your temper in games like that when, uh, you know, you could have cost us points. I mean – with that I believe that um, that penalty cost us, and we didn't end up uh, converting that fourth down, if I'm not mistaken. But if we're down there, Borigalis's leg is good enough to get you three points. So I'm just saying that those are some things that I observe of where this offense um, is almost shooting itself in the foot sometimes. So that's one thing that definitely needs to be cleaned up, and I hope to God it doesn't hurt us in these next six games um, or whatever we have left this season, especially if it's something crucial against a much better opponent. The other thing I want to talk about is, again, I watch football, uh, the SEC. I watch the Big the, the uh, Big Ten now and all these teams and all the um, cross-country uh, travel that they're doing. But the one thing that stands out to me more than anything is a lot of the contenders for these conferences never get picked on by their own referees. I mean, I've never seen so many calls, so many reviews for Miami at this point. And it's you you could lie to me and say that we were the ones suing the conference to leave and not Florida State and Clemson. I, I'm, I'm being dead serious. And I'm not trying to say that some of those penalties aren't, but you have to check every damn touchdown. I mean, it really pisses me off. And it gets to the point where, yes, it's gone our way. But the fact is, is that I just cannot stand that the opponents and fans and haters and everything of that nature are pointing to the referees and saving Miami when, in fact, I feel that at times we are getting hosed. Those were just two crucial moments that could have gone easily the other way. I mean, do I need to remind everybody of the safety that wasn't a safety against Clemson, against Florida State last year or Clemson? I mean, I could go on and on about what happened in those games. And uh, luckily, in the Clemson game, it went well for us in double overtime. But still, uh, those are just things that are, are just my observance. Now, for this game coming up against Louisville, do you all know off the top of your head the last time that Miami came off of a loss from the previous season and actually avenged it and avenged it in a way that, you know, was in classic fashion? Matt, you got a better memory than me. I'd have to look it up, but I think it happened uh... – I mean, I think it happened the last couple of years, if I remember correctly. It's been back and forth with a lot of teams, you know. I mean, <laughs> but that's you have to understand, Mr. Italian, or is it Mr. Stallion? I don't know which one you are. Whatever you prefer, Mr. The. Um, there's there, there that that's a fan mentality. I get it, but this team's not saying, "Hey, because they beat us last year, we got to beat them this year." Like that's not how it works, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. This is this is a team that has almost um, how many new players from last year? Like more than half of the starters weren't even here last year. Okay, uh, this is not the same team as last year. This is not a team that's saying we got to avenge every loss last year, and that gives us extra motivation. You know, that's for the fans, that's for the media, that's for the fun noise stuff. But this team's just focused on trying to play its own game, uh, almost to the point that 
they're more focused on what they're doing than what the other team's doing for a change because, you know, and it sounds weird, but Miami, for the first time that I can remember since 23 years ago, 22 years ago, they feel if they play their game, they can beat anybody no matter what. They're better than everybody that they play versus we got to scheme this, we got to scheme that, we have to really do a lot of misdirection and, and try to do this and try to do that so maybe we'll have a chance against this team. That's not the way it is anymore. So, uh, you know, I, that doesn't answer your question, but it makes, um, it makes my voice um, come out uh, on, this, on this podcast saying, saying words. And that's what I try to do. I see your point. No, I see your point. I, the point that I was almost trying to make is you watched how uh, Cal came out. Um, with, you know, they had the, the home base behind them and they played the game of their lives. And I still don't know how the hell they lost to Florida State. That might have been some cross travel or what have you there. But I think I wish that Miami would come out and really just punch Louisville in the face, take the crowd out of the game. It's a noon game. It's classic recipe for where Miami's came out and slept walk and lost games like this in the past. I hope that it's different this time and what you're saying is true. And I'm not saying, I'm not calling you a liar. I just would like to just see the team come out focused, try to limit the mistakes and just come out there and punch somebody in the mouth. Like so many other teams that really weren't even on Miami's level with uh, how we've been the last few years. Everybody gets up for Miami. For once, I would like us to get up and absolutely just knock the crap out of somebody. That's, that's the, that. Isn't that kind of learning how to win? You know, we take winning for granted here, but uh, the current Hurricanes have never won. I mean, we've been garbage for for, for, for years. And uh, I, I think learning how to win is a lot of what this team is going through. And, um, you know, we, we've joked, we've called it, you know, win some, lose some, same plus same equals same for the past several years. Um, and really, when you're life or death to beat Virginia Tech and Cal, it's no different. Then when Al Golden was here, when when Manny was here, uh, God, I mean, I hope Mario's not watching the show. He might punch me through the screen. But, I mean, the program is considerably better. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind about that. That's why I'm saying this team is just scratching the surface. But the games itself have really not been that different. Uh, you know, the victory in Gainesville was very classy, top to bottom. Um, the team was very well prepared. But these last two have been not too dissimilar from what we've been seeing here for years. Uh, so maybe these kids got to learn how to win and then they, they, they'll they do more of like what you're talking about um, and take charge of games earlier and, you know, be more solid from the first quarter. And then they're not pulling off miracles in the second half. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that. I, and, and I think that I agree with you to a point, Gary, that they are just scratching the surface. And maybe maybe I just know that it's different than what we've been accustomed to the last couple of years with some of the playmakers. You, you've got a quarterback for the first time, I'd argue, in almost 20 years. Uh, I mean, you know, there were some bright spots with guys that we've had under center, but I'm not talking. I'm talking about the consistency and the numbers this kid's putting up. There's, he's got that it factor. There's something about it. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And I really would like to just see them kind of pick up where they left off with Florida because realistically, maybe they might come out and, and be really motivated to beat Louisville. I saw them come out against Florida and Florida's not the usual Gator team, but I'll tell you, Tennessee needed every break to win that game on Saturday. And I was really kind of hoping for Miami's purposes that Florida did win that game just to show that that was still a quality win for Miami, in my opinion. To go down there in the swamp and do what they did, I mean, that shouldn't be overlooked. It took uh, Tennessee to beat the backup freshman quarterback and running back uh, when those guys got knocked out. We didn't have that happen until the fourth quarter, at least with the quarterback. So I'm just saying that I, I, I think that they are just scratching the surface. I hope that they are focused and get it done because it is in front of them and they have a great opportunity. And I, I really would like to be in Charlotte this year. And I, I'm not really afraid of Clemson. I don't think Clemson's beaten anybody all that great. I mean, honestly, um, you look at their schedule. I, I think you're right with what you said on, on uh, Good Morning Canesport a couple days ago that we're going to see what they're all about when they travel to Virginia Tech and Blacksburg and, th and Pitt and, and those type of games. I think they play Pitt. But I'm just saying that I'm not afraid of Clemson. And I just think that Miami just needs to play their game and there are holes i mean 
you know, you're right, Matt. The linebackers and DBs are, you know, been a little suspect the last couple games. Hopefully they can get it together. They're going to have a heck of an opponent that's going to be throwing the ball all over the place. But I just hope that Miami does what they need to do to not beat themselves. Stupid turnovers, stupid penalties. They cut that stuff out. These teams the remaining on their schedule, there shouldn't be anybody within two touchdowns of them. That's just my opinion. That's fair. Yeah, absolutely. I did have a couple questions for you guys. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on um, uh, any of the players uh, that are, like, for example, we're looking at um, some recruits uh, now more in the 2026 cycle. Is there anybody in the 2025 cycle that you feel that they could still flip that could potentially really help us in some areas of need like defensive back and um, other positions of need? Uh, yeah, I mean, DJ Pickett is one that comes to mind for sure. Um, I, I would almost predict that. Um, TJ Alford is a, a defensive lineman that they are continuing to make decent uh, traction with. Uh, that one comes to mind. Um, I am not very optimistic about Elijah Griffin, who's uh, announcing this week. He's still listing Miami. Um, I don't see that one happening. Um uh, who else? I'm trying to think who else, Matt, uh, that we should throw out there right now. I mean, um, several, maybe, several of the receivers. Mal Malachi Tony, I think. Yes, yeah, Malachi Tony. I think you're going to see come back into the Miami fold. I would be surprised if that did not happen. Um, but we're getting pretty near to the end here. I mean, we're only what six weeks from signing day. Yeah. And and it's it's right after the end of the season, so you know, I don't know that we're going to see that much more movement in this current class. I, I mean, I, you know, I, like I said, I think there's a few guys that they could still add, but um, it's gotta be getting pretty close. Well, one last thing, Gary, I appreciate you letting me know about those names. Uh, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on them. Uh, one last thing we mentioned uh, in the past couple of weeks, I forget who it was, but maybe that Ray Ray Joseph could be a transfer candidate and so forth. Are we already kind of starting to see that because um, in the, in the, uh, it looked like on a couple of punt returns, and I don't know if that was because we were down by so much. I saw that they had Restrepo back there as well, like both of them able to possibly return both. You, you know, maybe it was some something just in situational. But, I mean, is there a chance that maybe even Chris Johnson could get a look back there at punt return? Because, honestly, that's been one thing that's been missing from this team is the dynamic of the field position. And I know I'd rather have a fair catch than a horrible turnover deep in the other team's territory. But at the same time, uh, I just feel that uh, they need to get Chris Johnson on the field as much as possible. You know, I, I think in, in some years, you would love to have multiple specialists. You know, uh, this team, the way this team is built, you know, with the the top four guys at receiver commanding most of the reps, uh, there's just not a lot of turns for the Ray Ray Josephs of the world. And and I don't know if they keep recruiting the way they're recruiting. I don't know if that will change. Uh, so, yeah, I do think Ray Ray Joseph is a transfer candidate after this season. Um, you know, hopefully Christopher Johnson is not. Uh you know, I think he has so much more to offer. But the problem they're having is that when they bring him in the game, the other team knows he's getting the ball. Yeah. So it's starting to get pretty predictable now. Like they were able to get away with it a couple times and, and do some things with them. But it's really, really hard with those guys when, you, you you know, you bring them in for a play here, a play there, and they're almost definitely getting the ball on that play. It, it, it's It's very tough to be successful that way against a decent team. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, that was one of the things that I threw out there. I'd, I would like to see uh, Christopher Johnson more involved here the second half of the season. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I hope they just give him a series. Maybe if they give him a series, it may not be like, Oh, well he's out there, but he's getting the ball running it, not just for a decoy or throwing it deep, you know, just because he's faster than somebody but the else. The problem is you have a power run game. That's yeah. not built for him. Yeah. He can do it. He can do it in spots, and and I hope they use him some like that. I I don't disagree with you. Um, but you're gonna put him in there instead of Jordan Lyle. I mean, you can only have one guy in there at a time. There's just there's too many guys right now that do the same thing. Uh, Jordan Lyle is a power runner with breakaway capability, like 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 uh, Christopher Johnson. So um, it's a tough it's a tough uh, thing for the coaches with a different set of personnel. Like I said. I think maybe there would be more reps for these guys, 
But right now, with this set of personnel that, that Shannon Dawson is managing and, you know, I think doing a spectacular job this year, you know, I, I, I mean, other than getting more guys, you know, meaningful reps to impact the game, uh, he's really been coordinating this whole thing as well as you can, as much because he's letting Cam Ward be Cam Ward than imposing a system, you know, a strict system of, of executing a play onto his quarterback who is built in a little bit of a different way than your traditional quarterback. So, absolutely. Right, well, I, I predict that we win. Um, I think it will be uh, – I'd like to say that we win by two touchdowns. I'm going to go with that prediction and roll with it. And uh, let's just keep this thing going. And uh, you guys just keep doing your thing. And uh, God bless you guys. Love you. I hope, you're, I hope you're right. I am expecting an insane football game on Saturday, just a crazy football game. So we'll and, see. And, what and, and by the way, you know, Chris Johnson to me is more likely to transfer than Ray Ray because it's not about how they're being used this year. It's about how they'll be used next year. And Xavier leaves after this year. So Ray Ray would be in line to be the starter, hypothetically, whereas Chris Johnson is going to be behind Mark Fletcher and Jordan Lyle next year. I don't imagine he'll stay in that situation. Given and Martinez outcome. can come back another year. Martinez could come back. So. That's true, but... Um, He's not. Season, he can't leave if this season continues like this. I don't he, think. But I think. Like, I think Martinez, if he realizes he's not as good as Mark Fletcher and maybe even as Jordan Lyle, he'll leave because he's going to be the third string guy next year. You know, he can transfer again. So I don't know. We'll have to see how he plays. Yeah, the rest we'll of the year. All, right, all right, guys. Guys. Great show. Later. All right, man. Thank you. Thanks for being part of it. Um, all right, tonight's show is sponsored by Caneswear, your ultimate authority for all your Miami Hurricanes merchandise. If you have not loaded up on gear yet for this season. Haven't gotten your Cam Ward jersey. Um, go to Canesware at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Um, or you can shop them online at Canesware.com. We'll talk more about Canesware later in the show, but we thank them for uh, being the sponsor of this show this entire season. Um, now let's go out to our man who is at work, chomping at the bit, uh, as always, to give us his weekly uh, take on what's going on. That's our man, Kane Kane. <laughs> What's happening? Hey, Matt, nice article, buddy. You did something. I like that. Hey, Gary, you know you do good articles, but Matt really went into detail about this Louisville game. So I'm going to say, Matt, I'm 100 with you. Let the full down linemen do their thing. We don't need to blitz all the time. This quarterback can't really run. Right. If this jackass come out, excuse me, if that good coach, D through the corner, because he's not been good, but if he blitz and blitz, they ain't probably going to light our ass a new one. But we do got Cam that can light them a new one, too. But play the game. Give them something they ain't looking for. I agree because everybody knows they're going to bring that front four and they're going to blitz bang and they're going to do this. But if they do that and that little speedy running back they got was the number 25, oh, damn. And then the receivers, he made a good point. But like I said before, the sun going to rise on the 305 to get all the other BS. Hey, Gary, you know you said at the beginning of the year you saw two losses. Last week, if we lose two, it's a terrible season. You can't do that, Gary. You can't change it in the middle of the season. You just can't. Matt, I think Matt was on the borderline. What were you, man? Two, two games. Not We can't lose more than two, right? That was the key. I know the schedule looked whack, but look at all these other teams that struggle. Look at the Ohio State. To me, someone playing. You don't bring your damn game, you're going home with a L. Point blank period. There is no dominant team, maybe Texas. Texas is the only one look like they're doing a little something, something. Damn Alabama, forget the Georgia, forget the rest of them. But at the 305, do what they're supposed to do and play accordingly or play like they did against Florida. To me, Florida has been their best game. Even though y'all say Florida was a not a good team, but hell, like they said, Tennessee, if Mertz didn't fumble the goddamn ball before halftime and then he got hurt, they would have beat Tennessee. I believe it. The young quarterback, he's still young. You know, he's still trying to get it. So if I go with quarterback play, and when you're betting with fan dudes and stuff, you try to get the best quarterback. I'm going with Cam. I don't care about no blowout. I don't care if the field goal kicker kick a 90-yard damn field goal. Long as we win, period. So it ain't too much more to say. It's been a great season. Let the tide ride. And then, you know, after this game, oh, hell, we really got the tide ride on Sorry, as FSU, but it's football. And remember what y'all said last week. I'm getting ready to go. Oh, there's no way. No way Virginia could beat Louisville. Damn it, they were this close. And I was going to eat y'all a new one. But they pulled off, so I got to apologize. Y'all got it right that time. Bye.
skinny, skin, skinny, y'all hip. Yes, yes. 305 right of that. See y'all in Florida. Next week against Florida State for homecoming. Love y'all. You do a great job. Keep getting them good posts. And man, if this and Gentry don't do what you said, it could be a problem. But we're going to win anyway. 10 4. Love y'all. 305 right of that. Hey, you won't let us change our predictions in the middle of the season, huh? Hell no, you got to keep it in your mind. I would change You got to keep it in your mind. We, we, we pulled the rabbit out of our hat the last two weeks. I would definitely change it. Yeah, we did pull the rabbit, but man, you know, it's like that. It's football. You know, let's play the game and see what happens. You know, like FSU, we can look to blow them out, but that's a rabbit. We don't know what the hell really going to happen. Last year, they were pulled the mud stompers, right? With all that talent. And if Emory didn't get hurt, there's a possibility we would have won. Then they put TVD in the game. No offense. The time he should have threw the ball to Restrepo wide open, he looks away and throws it to George and he got picked. I'll be damned. Well, that's last year. Let's keep it rolling, baby. Go to the next number. See y'all. Love y'all. This is the All one. right, now. Yes, sir. This is the one on Saturday. This is the one? Well, let it be. This is the one. Let it be. Don't sleep too late. I don't care what shift they give you the day before. Don't sleep too late. <laughs> this, is, this is the one Saturday at noon. Man, I've been to every damn game. I can't make that game. I'm a season ticket holder. I've been to Florida. That was the game. Florida. This, that. Hell, I'll be in the rest of them. I got three more home games. Florida State, Wait for us and do. The Manny game. Everybody want to see that game. All right. Don't you? Yeah. Y'all take it easy. Right on. Yeah, be good. He was uh, talking to me, and you cut him off. I want to know where he got his gasoline hat. I want that hat. Gasoline <laughs> hat. Costco, baby, where I work for my company, Costco Wholesale. Oh, I can get you one. I hey, tell you what, man. Let me let me ask you. So, so Kirkland makes tuna fish and gasoline. Man, they make toilet paper, paper towel. Man, Costco one of the biggest companies out there. Sam's and BJ can't do nothing with Costco, bro. Nothing. The only thing Sam's got better. I'm telling you right now, Kings, Kings, I'm not having the Kirkland tuna fish anymore. I didn't know they make gasoline. I don't want any cross contamination in there. I don't need that. I got no problems without that. They make ice cream. They make wine. They do it all. My man Jake's not coming there to buy his wine anymore either. <laughs> it don't matter. Everybody else will. Thank you. And T Dog's not coming to buy whatever he's drinking. <laughs> We're done. Everybody come to Costco. Not Costco anymore. <laughs> don't worry. For the ones that won't, everybody will. Y'all take care. All right, King Kane. You know, um, one thing we haven't talked about yet this week is the significance that this game is at noon. Uh, I mean, I thought for sure this was going to be a night game. I expected Louisville to be unbeaten like Miami at this point in the season. They screwed up. Um, you know, they lost two, two games. And uh, now they put the game at noon, which I think is a huge break for Miami, Matt, um, that they don't have to play at night up there. I mean, it, it, that's a tough venue at night. <laughs> I mean, the, it helps maybe a little bit, but I'm not going to put a, a big emphasis on that. There's way more important factors. That's probably a hundredth on my list of factors that are actually going to matter in this game. If it was going to be a 95 degree day in, in Louisville at noon, then I'd say, yeah, you know, that's a positive for Miami. But you know, you're still on the road. It's still going to be a very loud environment. The fans won't be as drunk. The students might show up a little bit late, but like that's about the only difference I can see. You know, and, and you could see a little better in the in the daytime when you're really old like us. And at night, it's harder to see. These young gentlemen, it doesn't matter. They can see whether it's dark out or light out. You know, and they got some, I believe they have lights at that stadium. So they probably could have played at night also. I think it would have been okay either way. I, I think it's a big deal. I, I, I think that it t does take a little bit of juice out of the crowd and gives Miami a, an opportunity here to come out fast out of the gates. And, well, that, and that's the key. I mean, the key is to yeah. start out. You know, I mean, the crowd's juice, I, it, I find it very overstated. <laughs> you know, some teams play better on the road than they do at home. The New York Giants, Daniel Jones can't throw a touchdown at home. On the road, he lights it up. You know, it, it just depends on the players and, and how they function. You know, I don't think Miami cares. I don't think Cam Ward cares if he's on the road against a really loud crowd or on the road with nobody in the stands. As a matter of fact, he might prefer it really loud and, and crazy. You know, some players respond better to that. I don't, I don't think that's a big deal. All right, I would go to Greg, but this is all I see. Okay, so Greg, where's Greg? Oh, there he is! There he is! Oh no! Oh no! It's a big bad Greg. 
Don't do it to me, Greg. Do it to Gary. Okay, Matt. No, Gary. <laughs> Matt, I want to know what game you were watching Sunday night. You said the Giants got called for five illegal men, men downfield. I said three, I four, or five. Three, four, were. or no, five, yeah. It was yeah. one, maybe two at the moment. All right, I'll call it up, Greg. Just for you, I'm going to call up the play-by-play, -play and I'll look it up for you, okay? Okay, now let's get into this. I want to discuss this powerhouse offense of Louisville that you guys are talking about. They scored 24 against Notre Dame, 27 against Miami Light, a.k.a. SMU, 24 against the mighty Virginia Hokies, and 31 against Georgia Tech. That's not a powerhouse offense, in my opinion, okay? Miami scored 39 against Cal, who's given up 13 points a game other than that. That's a powerhouse offense, Miami, not Louisville, okay? Louisville's lucky they only have two losses, all right? Now, you were – let me – do I recall last year we got killed by the tight end against Louisville? Do you remember that? I do, yes. Okay. Uh, you think uh, Gidry will look at the tape of the last three games Louisville's played and maybe we can control them a little better than we did last year? But anyway... Uh, this quarterback from from Louisville, he's a seventh year player. Original, wasn't he recruited by Mario? He was recruited to Oregon by Mario, and then he went to I think Texas Tech, and now so, came to Louisville. I don't know that it's seven years though. I don't think it's seven. Yes, it is. I heard it was seven. whatever. Anyway, um, don't you think Mario has a little? He would know his tendencies. A little bit? Yeah, to a degree. Okay. I mean, he's, he's got to be a different player at this point. It's I mean, it's you're talking four years down the road here, you know. Okay. Okay, like this Italian stallion gentleman was mentioning. Florida, terrible team, but they should have beat the immortal Tennessee Volunteers. By the way... Where are all these great defenses in college football? I see every team giving up points galore. Alabama, where's their defense? Where's Old Miss's defense? Where's LSU's defense? Where's Georgia's defense? Who has a great defense? What was the score of the game the other night? 32-31, Oregon and Ohio State. So maybe we could say Texas says is a great defense, one team. So it's okay. Miami, I'm giving you the final score. You ready? 38-21. <laughs> All right, so listen, Greg, you were, you were correct about the Giants. There was one downfield ineligible. They, they did throw the ball, however – to an offensive lineman at one point, which, you know, I, I, was I was conglomerating a few different things, but you're absolutely right. It was just one downfield. You were 100% right. Uh, regarding, right. The, regarding the defenses, however, you're not so right because Texas is number one in the country in total defense, 229 I yards. I said game. they had a good defense. Yeah, Tennessee is number two. Ohio State's number three. So, you know, some of the good teams have, have, have done pretty well on defense, not just well on offense. But, but your point's taken. I think it's an offensive um, – it's an offensive generation. You know, this is not, you know, it used to be defense wins championships. Now it's offense wins championships. So it's to, the, to that extent, you're also correct, Greg. Okay, you happy? You're going to leave me alone now? I'm very happy. Listen. Right. Well, I'll, I'll hold a note that says Greg is right every time you're right. You want me to get, get a, like a, I'll order something for you? A little no, placard? I just wanted to let you know you should start eating some meat. It's good for your brain. You might remember <laughs> how many times. 
<laughs> All right. Enjoy your stone crabs. I'll talk Thank to you, you next week after we beat the immortal Louisville Cardinals. And, and, I, and I, do, I, I do eat meat because stone crabs are the chicken of the sea. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Whatever you say. Have a steak. Good night. <laughs> I, was, I, I do have chick. I have chicken a lot. I love three chefs. Oh, you they do. Be, three chefs should be a sponsor. You need me. Oh, I don't eat steak or hamburger mainly because I don't digest them anymore very well. You know, you don't want to be around me if I'm eating steaks and 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 uh, hamburgers, Greg. So you know what? I'll go out to. I'll go out and eat a hamburger with you. How about that? Sure. Nice time I'm down here. <laughs> All right. All right. Nice talk, right, Greg. Uh, good seeing you again. Yep. Right, let's go. Let's go to uh, everything three hundred five. You don't want to hear more about my digestion problems. That's it. No okay, digestion go ahead, questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Nobody wants to hear about my digestion. Go next. All right. Let's go to everything three hundred five audio only. Uh, everything. Welcome back to Kane Sport Live, gentlemen. How are we doing tonight? We're doing great. Doing great. What's up? I what? love the disembodied voice. That's like the old. It's like old school. Uh, I'm glad to hear we're all doing well. Uh, Gary, you asked a couple of interesting questions last yesterday at the press conference, so I was hoping you could uh, give us a little bit more insight on what you were trying to get to with the uh, the changes you were hoping they had been making. Well, all right, so similar to that yesterday. When when, when I look at this at, at this team, you know, I, I I go I look at every position and I see chances to massively improve. I mean, Cam Ward's got to stop turning the football over. As good as he is. If he is 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 going to be turning the football over, that will compromise winning. It has already this season. We will see it again here in the second half of the season. Um, he's got to just get himself. He's got to find the wheelhouse between being him, which is unbelievable, obviously, and hurting himself and his team with turnovers. Because uh, as we all know, being you know football mavens uh, across the board, uh, everyone that's uh, watching the show. Turnovers are very hard to overcome in football games. Um, so Cam Ward has got, other than that, he's been great. Uh, he's got to protect the football. Um, at the running back position, uh, you know, I think Martinez has so much more to give. I think Fletcher can can do even more than he's done. you got to manage his reps, okay? You don't want to overwork Mark Fletcher. Uh, you're trying to get him through this season healthy. It's really important to this team. I mean, you see the value of Mark Fletcher. Uh, but, I mean, he can do more. Jordan Lyle can certainly do more. Christopher Johnson can certainly do more. Uh, the onus is on Shannon Dawson to make sure he doesn't allow all of these other guys to disappear from the football team, keeps them engaged, gets them involved. He's going to have to get a little bit more creative with Christopher Johnson, like I said, because of the predictability of every time him coming on the field, uh, he gets the ball. Uh, I look at the tight ends. I mean, Arroyo is as good as any tight end in the country. Okay, he's had some great plays. Caught the winning touchdown pass at California. Uh, had one um, one uh, deep pass up the sideline. I think it was against South Florida. Uh, he is capable of really busting out the second half of the year. I think he's as good as any tight end in the country. I think that that he could be utilized so much more. Um, the receivers. Uh, I think they've all flashed at different times, but when it's been crunch time, the ball's been going to Restrepo almost exclusively. Um, I think they got to become a little bit less predictable there as they get ready to play better teams here uh, later in the season. Um, I would like to see that get rounded out a little bit for this team to maximize itself. Uh, they have the capability. Um, I would like to see them get the chance to impact the game more. Isaiah Horton's having a great year. He's got a couple hundred. He's got almost as many catches, I think, as Restrepo, but a couple hundred yards less. Okay, I'd like to see that kind of balance itself out. Like, I love Xavier Restrepo. To me, he is accomplishing as much with what he has to give as anybody I've ever seen play for the Miami Hurricanes. Um, but I'm not invested in him obliterating the record books. Okay, I think for this team to be as good as it can be at the end of the year, these other guys got to be contributing at least close to equally to Restrepo. Just my opinion. Don't know if I'm right or wrong. Um, I don't. I don't understand why they always throw to Andre Johnson. Like, why do they keep throwing that guy? Get the other guys involved. It makes no sense. I don't understand. That's not what happened. It was never about one guy. It was never just about Andre Johnson. That's what made it so great. Like, you know, you had other yeah. guys, you had, you had Portis, you had Shockey, you had different guys 
that we're all getting opportunities to be the man at different points of games and well, along, I, the, along the way. It wasn't just... I, I think a big part of that, though, Gary, was that you had a, a masterful game manager that controlled, and I mean, he wasn't the physical alpha, but he was the Dorsey? mental alpha about Ken Gorsey. And I think he's yeah. the reason why a lot of those things happened during that time frame is that he was in charge out there. And he distributed the ball, and he was he did a phenomenal job of always what was given, he would take, he would only press the envelope every once in a while, and he relied on his offensive line pretty much establishing the line of scrimmage and maintaining it. I think, I think he's the best, the best answer to that question that you just had is you had that as a difference maker. On the opposite end, what we have is the ultimate playmaker, and sometimes you're going to live by him and you're going to die by him, and what you, what you get is what you get. So in terms of eliminating the turnovers, I don't think that's ever going to be the case. That's been who this guy has been since day one. Uh, if you look at all the tape, if you look at all of his numbers, his biggest issue when the scouts looked at him was turns the ball over too much, make tries to make the elite play at the wrong time. So that it's not a level of selfishness either. I don't misinterpret what I'm saying, but what it is is his mentality of I'm a winner and I'm going to win every throw, and if I don't, I'm going to win the next one. So he puts. This is a different frame of mind that we've that we've had here at the quarterback position going back. I don't know how. I mean, maybe the closest guy before that might have been, um, you know, maybe Gino, who would just, I'm going to fling it and screw it. Uh, that's, that's the type of mentality this guy has. I will say that what he also has provided this group is what Dorsey did, which was give them a sense of ownership, leadership, and pretty much – it's us against everybody. And just believe in me and trust me. We haven't seen these things from a from our quarterback position in many decades now. So we've got all this going for us. But at the same token, other guys have to step up and get better mentally. You can't have a guy getting penalties still that are that are with no purpose in, in, in Jacoby George. That's got to stop. It continues. There's no accountability there. Well, how a about guy. Isaiah Horton? Isaiah Horton on the winning on the winning drive kicks a guy like gets a fifteen yard penalty. Like right. you got to be you've got to be better than that. But I, everything I think you know, I think you got the point. Uh, you know, I mean, I went through the offense for you, and I you know you could do the same thing on defense. There is many ways, so many endless ways that this team has upside and can get better. I think they are just scratching the surface, and I think that's good for the Canes because. They're six and zero. Oh, they're number six in the country. And if they can find a, a will and a way to get better, they're going to get through this season uh, potentially undefeated. Obviously. Well, talking about defense, Matt, <clears throat> Matt's piece earlier about you know getting with the with your front four getting more pressure, not having to blitz as much. I'm hoping that we're going to see a little bit more zone schemes incorporated. Uh, the impact that Ruben's going to have in that front four, I think that's going to be impactful. But if those things come together and we can eliminate basic plays from becoming quick scores for the opposing team or big plays for the opposing team that are going to result in a score, I think if you're able to limit that and, and, and at least be a little bit more efficient, okay, that's going to help this team in terms of being able to manage the game better and then on the flip side, controlling the time of possession, running the ball effectively, and throwing the ball when we need to. We talked about that we're almost throwing the ball. I mean, it seems at times, guys, that we're like 70-30. That impacts your defense. But also it impacts your defense of how thin we are right now in terms of the bodies on the back end, how inexperienced we are. And that's not going to get better because Damari Brown ain't coming back this year. And if he does, it's, it's going to be just, you know, maybe at the bowl game or something. So at this stage, what you have is what you have. Those guys have to become more efficient. And the one way you can do that is to simplify things a little bit more, be a little safer on the, on the back end, give a little bit more, okay, so it's not like you're dying a slow death, and then run some games from there, a little bit of smoke and mirrors, and do those type of things that can help you. But the front four, they have to take control of the line of scrimmage. And that's, that's where we need to go. If not, we're going to continue to have these, we have to outscore the opponent. Yeah, and those I mean, type of contests are hard to deal with. Tyler Barron, to me, can do massively more than what he's done the last few weeks. Um, Mesador, 
I, I mean, I don't know if it's because he's moved inside, so he's getting less opportunities, and, and he does tie up guys and, and, and do things that we that you don't see in the stat sheet, no argument. But he could be so much more impactful than what he's been. Ruben Bain, his season's just beginning. So the defensive line, to me, is just getting started. I, I mean, another textbook example of how much upside this team has. Here, Bob. I'll make one point, uh, just because I haven't spoken in a while and I've been behaving behaving myself, so I get to make one point. Uh, <laughs> if if this season does go south, and if it's because of the secondary, which probably to me is the only reason it could possibly go south, then it's a travesty because we were, well, at least I was, I think you were too, Yari, we were banging the table even before the spring saying the secondary is the question mark. The secondary is the question mark. They knew that after the season was over, you know, you got your two safeties leaving. You got very little proven talent back. Uh, you had one returning starter in Daryl Porter who looked good last year, but has had no interceptions his whole career. Basically. And he had a couple at West Virginia. Uh, and, and they went out and did nothing in the transfer. They got Mish Powell. Okay. Who's it's great to get him. Right. And they plugged him in at nickel where he couldn't cover anybody. And they moved him to safety in the fall where he's been okay, sort of hit or miss, um, better than any other safety we have. Jaden Harris has been inconsistent. So they addressed every position in the portal, okay? They shored up the linebacker depth with Jalen Alderman who's now hurt, but they shored up that depth. And they knew they had two returning starters. They knew they were good there anyway. And they knew Popo Aguirre was going to be good back there also. They knew they had enough defense line bodies, and they still kept adding bodies, adding bodies, adding bodies, even after they had the depth they needed, right? Uh, the offense, they get the quarterback they needed. They had good running backs. They still got another running back, Damian Martinez, right? On the offensive line, they got their center that they needed uh, to replace. They, they addressed every position, even wide receiver. They knew they had a bunch of great guys. They still got another receiver, yet the secondary was never addressed. And that comes back to Mario Cristobal. I don't understand how you don't address the one position that you knew was going to cost you games potentially. And if it does, it's a travesty because it was, it was avoidable. You have no, the money. You I, have I don't think they were counting on Damari Brown. You know, you yeah, don't know. Not, one guy's not fixing that defensive second. No, no, There's no depth. There's but, two seniors, two juniors and a million freshmen. Okay. But, but Matt, all this said, and they gave up those big plays against Cal. What are they? The number 14 defense in the country. Correct. I mean, this isn't panic. They're 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 they're, they're passing yards. They're passing yards allowed after the first four games went from like number twelve in the country to number forty in the country. They've because been abysmal because it's because they finally played two quarterbacks who can throw the ball. All I'm saying is, if they lose a game, if it's because of the secondary, it would have been avoidable five six months ago. Uh, well, I guess what it was nine months ago, but they never addressed it, even though Matt, even though Matt, Smith, fairness, they knew it was going to be the problem. In fairness, I think they did try to address it. They weren't successful in going after the bodies they wanted. Well, they and there's did, a they big did difference. Try to, yes, they did. There's try to a big safety. difference there. They did try to get a safety a couple of corners. I agree with you, but you know what? They tried the same thing at quarterback. They tried, they, that's how it works. You have another guy behind them who you get, and they didn't get anybody. And maybe there was nobody to get. But and, you know, just knowing Mario, he would have he would have created people to come into the portal if it would have meant the difference between losing a game or two and winning the ACC title undefeated, okay. right? There was, I a, mean, there was a kid that's from down here. I'm not going to say anything, but he's from down here. He's at an SEC school, and that was almost done, and then, you know, right. and that, that got pulled. So there were several guys that they were they were pushing for. And didn't there, was, get. there was another kid in the SEC that was also ready to go, and then – you know, yeah. they matched and he stayed. Well, I, I, he I remember, but then, I remember. But at the end of the day, again, you have yeah. to get somebody. The, you can't just say, oh, well, we didn't get him, so now we lost a couple of games. Like, that's what the coaches are there for. That's what NIL is about. You pay more. If it's a bidding war and that's the one position that you need to go undefeated, that's the biggest weakness on your team, you win the bidding war. You know, like, I don't I don't understand it, but it's just annoying. All right, everything. You got anything else for us tonight? Appreciate you guys. Have a great night. All right, man. We'll see you yeah. next time. Um, Anthony Jones, you know, he says he thinks the defense is going to dominate this Saturday. Uh, I don't I don't think that it's as massive a problem as you're making it out to be, Matt. Uh, you know, I, I, I think the defense has played, you know, decently. I, I, enormous upside, like I've said. But it was a big the, – the busts were a huge problem against Cal. And, and you're right. If they're going to bust like that, 
then they're going to compromise victory for sure. Oh, I mean, you, you can say they're playing well, but again, I've gone over the pro football focus grades and cover grades are actually accurate for pro football focus because it's a guy on a guy. And the two lowest grades you're going to find on the team and probably <laughs> for any starting team in the ACC are Daryl Porter and, and Jadeus Richard at 56 and 57% grade. Damari Brown was at 59 before he got hurt, which obviously that's not fair because he hasn't played much. Um, Jaden Harris, 60.4 when he's in coverage situations, still not good. You know, 70 is considered okay, um, decent. Deani Hill, 64%. You know, the only good one's been OJ Frederick, and he's at 68%. They don't, they don't have a single guy in the secondary that's even at 70%, which is considered a, a good grade. Uh, so you can say they've been good enough, but like the back end is the weakness. It, it has been exposed. You can argue it hasn't, Gary, all you want. And the fact is, it's not it, been a good it, secondary. It if if the defensive line can get there in time, it will mask the problems. And that's very, very important to do. But don't try and sit there and say, oh, they've been fine. They have not been fine in the second. All half. right. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you halfway on this. I, I'll agree that the defensive line getting better pressure on the quarterback in the second half of the season is huge. Um, you know, I, I've, I've seen some slippage there. I, I, I thought that, you know, Tyler Barron was great earlier in the season. I, I, he has not been... He's been okay, but not as good as I think he can be. Um, I'd like to see that change the second half of the season. I'd like to see Mesador, you know, really start to bust out here in the second half of the season. And then obviously Ruben Bain, he's got the game under his belt now. Uh, he looked a little rusty to me up there at Cal. Uh, I'm expecting him to be much better here now moving forward um, as the season progresses. So um, we'll see how that goes. Um all right, Matt, before we let you go, Mayday is asking about whether you got any crabs today or not. Um, did you get out on the boat we, today? We are we rescheduled for tomorrow uh, because I wish I could say it so I had to come on to this show, but it wasn't. Uh, my friend had a work emergency, so we had to uh, to reschedule it. Uh, very, very unfortunate. I thought about just taking, you know, he has the boat. I thought I was just taking my scuba gear out, grabbing his GPS and going to get him myself. Uh, but no, that would not be a good idea. So, yeah, we're going tomorrow. The, the weather, the, the bay is supposed to be a little bit rough, um, especially starting on Thursday. So we have a small window maybe to uh, to grab them tomorrow. So that's what we're going to try to do. All right. So before we uh, let, let you go and do your thing, um, any parting thoughts as Miami heads to Louisville? I mean, uh, you know, just generally speaking, I, I can't imagine Miami losing this game. I don't know if that's just because I've been <laughs> covering this team uh for too long and i'm somewhat hopeful for no apparent reason because you know like i always say if you watch the same movie over and over again you sort of uh, are sort of you get um you know a stockholm syndrome thing where you sort of just expect something bad to happen like you know you just know what's going to happen you resign yourself to it and it's like okay you accept it uh but uh, this is the first time in 20 years i'm not accepting it because i think this team is good enough to win every game my fear is that somehow Mario Cristobal or these coordinators are going to just screw something up and have a really bad game plan in one game. And because Miami doesn't really play the level of schedule as some of these other teams and you lose one game, you fall behind Pitt, right? And Clemson, and now you're the third team in the ACC. SMU might even be ahead of you at that point. I mean, like, if you're the third or fourth team in the ACC, I don't care where you're ranked. If you're not in the ACC title game, you're not, even with one loss, they're not taking three or four ACC teams, you know, in a pretty weak ACC division that has not done particularly well against other conferences uh, overall, um, you know, I, I just don't see it. So I think Miami has to sort of finish undefeated, as weird as that sounds. Um, you know, can you lose to Louisville and still make the ACC title game? Yes, that's probably what would have to happen, right? They would need to have SMU lose a game or Clemson lose a game somehow and then get in there and win that and get a bye. Like, that's probably what would have to happen at that point, you know. So when yeah, I know fans aren't looking at the big picture right now, they're just worried about one game at a time, which of course is what the players always say when you ask them any question, you know, uh, every answer is, well, we're just looking at one game at a time. We're looking at ourselves, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, hopefully Miami does play a, a really good game against Louisville because they're going to have to, if, if, if they play the way they did against Cal and Virginia Tech, they're going to lose to Louisville. Like Louisville's a better team than Cal and Virginia Tech, regardless of their two losses, okay, by a touchdown each. Like, they're a better team. I've watched all three of those teams on tape fairly extensively. Louisville is a much better team on offense, uh, you know, consistency-wise than both those teams. And their defense probably has the best uh, defensive line linebacker combination compared to those other two teams also. Louisville's weakness is it's secondary, but they are getting their All-American cornerback 
all American level cornerback should be back. He came off the bench last game. So that's going to be interesting too. Um, you know, I, I, I could see this being a very close game. I, I know fans want to say they'll win by two touchdowns, but that's because your fans, you know, in my mind, I know the line, the line opened, I believe it actually was Louisville by a point, And now it's Miami by five or five and a half, wherever you look. Um, it was four earlier today. Okay. Well, I, I do see this coming down to basically the last couple of drives of the game. I mean, you can call me crazy, but you know, I just don't, you know, the way Cam Ward operates, like if it comes out to the last two or three drives of the game for each team, I'm taking Cam Ward. I mean, what did he do? Touchdown drives the last four or five games, four or five drives in a row <laughs> against Cal when you had no room for error. You know, if you give Cam Ward four downs on a series to go try and get a touchdown, he'll go and get the touchdown. It lines so up to four know. and a half. So uh, people are four seeing half, it yeah. the way you're seeing I mean, it. Yeah. I, you know, this isn't one of those games where I would go outside the line one way or the other like I did the last couple of games where I, you know, obviously I thought they'd beat Cal by more, but Virginia Tech, I was pretty much right on. Um, and, and this game, I would say it's, I can't even, you know, say what the score will be other than Miami will win by between one point and 21 points. I think that's, that's the spread. Miami is going to win by between one point and 21 points. That's Matt Chodell's bold prediction for the, for the week. You got to respect a couple of things. You know, Louisville's had this game circled the entire offseason. Jeff Brown will be incredibly prepared for this game, um, and he can dial it up as well as anybody in college football. Uh, I am expecting this thing to be a shootout on Saturday, and uh, it's going to be really interesting. Cam Ward's got to protect the football. Miami wins, in, 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 in my opinion. All right, Matt. Um, I'm going to let you run here. Thanks, as always, for being part of Kane Sport Live. And, uh, Enjoy chasing those crabs in the morning, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you soon. All right. Um, we're going to get to um, the voice of the fan, Bruce Warner, coming in to join me here in a minute. But I want to take a minute, guys, and talk to you about uh, Caneswear. And uh, without a doubt, uh, your number one destination uh, for all your Miami Hurricanes gear. Let's start by taking a look at Caneswear. Welcome, Welcome to Caneswear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fans. You guys see the store, it doesn't matter what you need, hats, helmets, jerseys, uh, t-shirts, anything with the U on it, they'll have for you at Canesware, your ultimate source for all your Miami Hurricanes merchandise needs. They've got all the sizes you can want, men, women's, kids, babies. They even have gear for your pets. Uh, so get on over to uh, Canesware where it's more than just a store. It is an absolute experience. And uh, if you go to home games, they're 15 minutes north of Hard Rock Stadium on University Drive, 2655 South University Drive in Davie. You could shop Canesware anytime you want at canesware.com. So uh, 2655 South University Drive in Davie, canesware.com. Check them out. You will not be sorry. Load yourself up on Canes gear. The Canes are 6-0. and Big game Saturday. Uh, get that uh, Cam Ward jersey while you can if this Heisman campaign continues. Those babies are going to get sold out. So uh, check them out at Canesware and, and Canesware.com. All right, let me bring in the voice of the fan, Bruce Warner, now uh, into the asylum. And um, Bruce, <laughs> before we get back to more of our guests, uh, you know, your general thoughts on, on, you know, where Miami stands here as it goes to Louisville. Well, I, I had a question, and maybe you can answer this one. If we didn't struggle in these last two games like we did, We'd be sitting here thinking about this may be a close game. I don't think so. I mean, I, we scored 39 points against Cal, and we stunk for the most part. Um, we My got answer would be yes, we would be. Um, it's because every game stands on its own two feet. Hello, Jay Collette. I hope you're watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves that line. But, um, no, every game stands on its own two feet, and this game, from the time the schedule came out, figured to be the toughest game of the year. And I am expecting it to still, um, you know, I don't know if I can say toughest game of the year because we've just had two tough games. I am expecting it to be a very difficult out on uh, on Saturday up there at, at Louisville uh, because of the talent that Louisville has on offense, the way it matches up with Miami's weakness, 
um, and the head coach and the respect I have for him and the way uh, that he can dial it up. And uh, in, in one of my columns this week, I quoted Nick Saban saying, what has happened in the past has absolutely nothing to do with what will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a phenomenal line. I couldn't agree with that more. Uh, so, yes, I, I do think we would be sitting here talking about this being a tough game. All right. So I also think that in these – well, in the last week since we were off last weekend, that Mario has gotten these te this team's attention. I think they had a lot of introspection this week. The players, the coaches, they watched the game filled against Cal. Cal made them look silly. If, if that's what happened at, at Cal, I can't imagine what Brahm's going to do. Because they took advantage of our over-aggressiveness, our over-pursuit, um, guys with absolutely no uh, eye discipline whatsoever in our secondary. They Every little fake, they went for it. We saw we saw Mish Powell covering a wide receiver one-on-one. -on -one. That can't happen. So from my reading and understanding what Mario has been talking about in the last 10 days in his press conferences – I think he's going to make some adjustments in the secondary. I don't think we're going to see as many young kids in, in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if they play a little zone to protect their safeties and protect the, the corners. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And, yeah, the pass rush. Now, you talk about Tyler Barron. He was nicked up in the Vatek game. He didn't play that well against Cal. I think he's healthy now. That's a big difference because that kid was creating all kinds of problems in the backfield. So I expect him to be healthy. I expect he four and a half sacks, and I, and I think uh, all but one came against FAMU and Ball State. So he he can do a lot more. He could do a lot more. I understand that, and I think Alston's going to be back. I haven't heard anything, but I believe so. I got one game under Bain's belt now because the first game really didn't count. And I do think the defensive line is going to play a lot better. I also expect Malanoa to play better because what we've seen so far has not been good. He's missing tackles. He's over-pursuing. Uh, he's sometimes not in the right place. So you and I both know that Mario has gotten on these guys. They had their own little team meeting. I think that they realize that they can't keep playing like that, and I don't think they're going to play like that. I think they're yeah, going to they're, play better, much better. I don't think there were any pizza parties with cake. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, Luis uh, Delgadillo, he says, in my mind, we're playing the 72 Dolphins this Saturday. Luis, would you, if I said the same thing about Cal or Virginia Tech, two games that could have gone either way, that there were multiple plays in each game that if they go against us, we lose? Uh, literally winning by the hair of our chinny chin chin. If I had said the same thing in either of those games, you would have ridiculed me as well. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the, he got to earn victory. It, it doesn't come easy. All right, let's go out to uh, T Dog. T Dog, welcome back to Kane Sport Live. Uh, what you got for us tonight? Man, apologize, man. My freaking lights went out at like around seven fifty, <laughs> so th they've been out for like a little over an hour, and they literally came back on about twenty minutes ago. So. I would have jumped in there earlier, but uh, yeah, didn't have any electricity. So it's okay. You're here now, and I'm actually on my phone now because the Wi-Fi for some reason still hasn't turned back on. But anyway, good to meet you, uh, Bruce. Finally on here. You um, too. You too, man. I, I I agree with you wholeheartedly, Bruce, with what you were saying. Matter of fact, I'm gonna send some fat cooter to your house to 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 show my respects because <laughs> Gary's talking nonsense. I totally agree. I think that this game recharges the team. What well, the bye week recharges the team. I feel like they're going to come out with the same focus they had against UF, and I actually I, that's think, my I agree, man. I think that they're going to go out there and beat the crap out of them, I just do. like they did. The swamp meant nothing yep. to them, and this Louisville means nothing to them. I think they're going to go out there and kick their ass. That's what I, I honestly feel. do. I think I for there's no doubt that no team is going to stop us from scoring at least thirty points. We've already established that, so they're definitely going to score over thirty. And I think Lance. Um, has figured out something on defense. I agree with you, Bruce, again, with the zone. I think he's going to do some zone, some zone blitzing because you can't just let a Brom quarterback team just sit back there and throw the ball, you know, relative, relatively easy. So I believe that they're going to do some zone blitzing. And I think the Kings are going to win at least by about 15 to 20 points. That's what I say. I said 41-23. Somebody said, who, who is that? Um, he said 38-21. Yeah, that's um, what's your McCall? What's his name? I forgot his stupid name already. <laughs> that's Matt, Matt's buddy. 
Oh, Greg. Oh, Greg. Yeah, Greg, he's yeah, the 38 yeah. I, That's what I think. It's going to be like 17 <laughs> points, something like that. Yeah. We Louisville doesn't team. belong on the field with us. I don't care. They have two losses this year, Gary. Yeah, And SMU made them look sick. They were so much faster than them. SMU was just – they destroyed that team. And you got to remember – no, and I think Greg coined the phrase SMU is like Miami light, right? So like they got like our leftovers, right? Yeah, they so do. If they have a did lot of that with our leftovers, what are they going to do with Cam Ward and, and X and and and, and, and Horton? So I, I don't yeah, think it's going to be a game. I think maybe in the beginning it might start out a little, you know, it might not be a, a huge blowout in the beginning, but I expect by the third quarter you're going to start seeing us pull away from them. Yeah, yeah I, I think I, I is bad. I agree. If the if the Canes showed up in Gainesville, the way they were prepared for that game, show up in Louisville, which they should be. I they mean, be. They, they had a week off. They've really been able to refine their game. They should be very focused and ready to go. Um, but I'm not disrespecting what Louisville's passing game might be able to do against our defense. We'll see. Except you know, this, the games we struggled. Out. The kid last week was able to run out of the pocket. The other two quarterbacks, Vatek and South Florida kid, ran out. This kid's not a runner. He's a pocket passer. Correct. So if they go after this Correct. kid, he's going to make mistakes. I don't think he has the ability, like like Mertz. Mertz, well, he's hurt now, but Mertz really can't run that well. He did okay, but we trapped this guy in the backfield. He made a lot of mistakes. That's what I think is going to happen this game. I just do. You ask any defensive end their favorite quarterback to go up against, and it's a pocket quarterback because they're going to necess- they're going to more times than not be on a spot, and those defense defensive ends are running towards that spot. When you have a guy that's mobile that's always off his spot, it's harder to account for where he is, which is why it's so hard for uh, defensive ends to get Cam Ward. But when you when you face a, a, a statue back there, it's a defensive end's favorite thing, man. Think about the Giants and the Patriots in that Super Bowl. That is why they went off on Tom Brady because he was a statue, and they were like, oh, we're eating tonight. They, they said it before the game started. This kid's like, tonight. what, 6'6"? Six, six? He's like a 6'6 six, six kid? He's yeah, tall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, so that's, I, that's, I agree that's with Gary, and I worry about I worry about Brom, T Dog. I do worry about Brom. He's a great, oh, great no offensive I, mind, and I think they're going to try to make take advantage of Miami's over pursuit and the aggressive like screens and things like that because we've been missing tackles all over the place. That's got to stop too. We can't be missing tackles. We got to smack some people this week. If we don't play well this week, then I'm very worried about what's going to happen the rest of it. But I expect us to beat these guys like we beat down Florida. And if that happens, I don't worry about anybody. That's for sure. No, I, I agree about their coach. He's one of the best game callers at the college level for sure. But I think that's where Gidra is going to come in and with that zone and confuse him and have some zone blitz behind that. Before we were blitzing out of man, so it's kind of it's kind of very easy to you know to, to, to decipher where the blitz is coming from. But I think if you disguise it a little bit better with some zone behind it, I think uh, mm-hmm. I think we're going to be successful. And then I, again, I think the defensive ends will be going to a spot, the same spot every rush, versus trying to account for a guy that can break out of the pocket. Well, certainly you want the D tackles to get up the field to flush this kid out. That's what you want, and that's what we used to do when we had. You know, we had Cortez, we had Russell, we had Will Fork, we had Sap, Jerome. They 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 created havoc in the backfield. So um, the fact that now um, Simeon Barrow is playing very well, he has to keep this up because he's pushing the uh, the guard in the center right into the backfield. That's that's what we need, and I expect Bain to be better. He's had a yes. week under his belt now. Agreed. So I I just think that my it's not a great matchup for Louisville. I don't think it is. But we play when we play it's like crap. When you play like crap for two weeks, yeah, this is you, everybody's talking like they're going to be. Defensively, it's not a good matchup for Louisville. Offensively, it's a very good matchup for Louisville. I think just you can say, Gary, it. if we hey, didn't have the what? end. We have a yeah. really good pass rush, Gary. Correct. If we didn't have if our we there and do have, nothing, then I would agree with Gary. Scheme, I just think the scheme. Listen, it's not just me, all right? I look at Vegas has set the over-under at 61 in this game. It's pretty high. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're expecting a lot of offense, just like I am. And, uh, you know, obviously, I do think we can win a, a shootout, but I don't think this is just going to be walking to Louisville at 12 o'clock and blow them out like some people want to think it will be. I hope it is. But, yeah. but, but I, I think these, these guys are basing it off two crappy performances, and they Correct. think we're going to play like that again. I Correct. don't think so. I think Mario's got their attention. These guys were, the last two weeks, they were happy that they won. 
but they were not really happy with the way they played. Miami's lost guys seven have, straight they gotta be in. angry. They have I to be Miami, angry. I think Miami's lost seven straight coming out of bye weeks, too. That's that's something that we gotta reverse here. Right. This year. I, I, don't, I, don't think reverse. I don't think it means anything in relation is, to, right. to, to this team. Um, but uh it is a, obviously a trend that they need to reverse. Well, the other trend, Gary, was we stink after we play Florida State, no matter who who it is. We, we just lay an egg the following week. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. But this, to me, is the biggest game of the year right now. They can't continue to play like that. Because if they play like that, T-Dog, then I think we're all worried about this, what's going to happen going forward. And we and we can't decide. We can't we can't be wishy-washy on when we want to listen to Vegas. Like, what was the Vegas saying about Vegas. us in the UF game? Like, it's, it's so funny how people want to use the Vegas line as an argument like come on bro like so what vegas gets it wrong i don't know how they do it bro but those guys get it right a lot <laughs> okay but what about with the uf game do you remember the over under for the way UF off game? that game way yeah. off exactly yeah. so like i honestly think now had we not been coming from a buy i can see your concern i can see your 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 reservations uh gary but we've been on a buy I saw Mario today on a um, on a different little show or whatever. The dude, uh, Kevin Clark or whatever, who went to UM, saw him on his show. Mario looked relaxed as hell, bro. Like, I have not seen Mario look this relaxed, this deep into the season in a long time. I think he knows that during that off week, they, they figured out some things. They scouted themselves. Like you said yourself, Gary, he loves to scout, self-scout. I think they're going to surprise the hell out of And it's a 12 o'clock game. I think they're going to surprise the hell out of Louisville right out of the gate. But they, okay, they have man. to get off to a fast start. They can't keep playing like this. It they would very well for going undefeated if they did if they won in a classy way on Saturday. No argument. All right, T Dog, you got anything else for us? No, I'm I'm out, man. I gotta go fix my Wi-Fi so my kids can do their homework, man. All right, homework. man. We'll talk, hopefully homework. we'll talk to you next week <laughs> after a huge victory. <laughs> All right, Pat, man. Hey, I'm gonna be Pat. down there for the Florida State game. I'm gonna bring everybody down there. So I'm gonna hopefully, hopefully I can bump into you. Hey, oh, next cool. week, yeah, yeah, next week on that. the show, just let me know because I'm going to be at the tailgate for the former players because I hang with those guys. I, I'm in the former player suite. I it's it's behind the it's behind the main entrance. I think it's black one or something like that. But just I'll get you some info next week because um, all my friends, all these former players, will be there, so you guys can come and hang around with them. Oh, that'd be all awesome! Right, man. Thanks, man. Awesome, Thanks Bruce. for being part of the show. Okay. As always, my pleasure. Uh, all right, if you want to come on the show, shoot us an email at canesport at yahoo.com. We'll get you in. Um, let's go out to uh, BK Hurricane. Uh, welcome back to Cane Sport Live. BK, what you got for us this week? What's up, Gary? What's up, Bruce? Man, I'm hey, sorry man. I missed a couple of weeks. You know, I've been working and stuff like that. But um, just watching the last two Miami Hurricane games, so that's Virginia Tech and Cal, they didn't do anything that – necessarily surprised Miami, but you saw a lot of mental bus specifically yeah. against Cal. I've never in my life seen that many linebackers make that many, like they had no eye discipline in that game. To give up those two long runs, the one by uh, Jaden Ott and other kid, I'm like, what the hell were they doing? Everybody saw it coming. Everybody was looking in the backfield somewhere else. So these are fixable problems. They didn't catch us off guard. Mish Pal, he wasn't exposed. He just, he was a knucklehead in those past <laughs> two games. He had no business being in the positions that he was in, but he was just there yep. every down. Every down. So this is a very fixable thing. It's not the scheme. It's not the game plan. We had a lot of guys out there, Francis Manoa in particular, is not living up to how he played the year before. And that's basically because everybody's out there trying to be a, a freaking hero. Tyler Barron trying to be a hero every play. Every play, he's he's got to be the one to get the sack. I got to get the sack. I got to get the sack. I got the sack. I'm not getting them. We got too many guys out there being hero, uh, being a hero when there's only one hero on the team, and that's Cam Ward. And he's and he's hero one a hero hero b is is uh, is your Restrepo. You know, um, but this Mario addressed that. Mar Mario addressed that in his presses. He keeps talking about some of the, the eye discipline has been horrible for our DBs. Horrible, horrible. horrible. And but they talked horrible. about it. They they're addressing it. 
They're talking about a lot of others. I'm telling you, I think they're going to have some zone in there, and that that'll that'll fool Louisville to a certain extent. I expect the pass rush to be better. I think everybody's healthy for the most part, and I do expect us to, to play much better. And the guy who has to make the tackles that who hasn't been is Malinoa. He's been he, he had a good interception the other day because he dropped into coverage, but still, he's trying to earn his NFL money. That's what he's everybody doing, is. Yeah, but you know it doesn't help if you're doing too much. Well, it, it just doesn't. I, I, help yeah, if you're look, I, I don't know if he's doing too much. He's just he's missing tackles. I don't know if he's focused. I don't know what he's trying to do. I can't. I don't. I'm not in his head, but I don't like what I saw, and I don't like the fact that we were up seven nothing last week, and then we got outscored thirty five to three. To three to yeah. three. When in the last twenty years, even though we haven't been that good, have we have we get had been outscored thirty five to three in any two periods or a quarter and a half or a half? Never. What happened? I've never seen, it, I've never seen anything like it. If Miami decides to put four quarters together, four quarters together, if, if they could play the same in four quarters, Louisville doesn't stand a chance. I mean, they'll score. Well, a couple well, of we're assuming like our that. offense is going to score thirty-five or forty points, and I think they will. I I, oh, I expect yeah. Cam Ward to play a much cleaner game. Uh, and and I know I was listening to Gary and Matt before. Um, it just doesn't it seem to you, BK, that every time Jacoby George is involved in a play and he gets hit, or even if he's not in a play and the, the play is somewhere <laughs> else, he's always looking for a fight. He's always looking to be involved. He's always got a pissed off attitude. He's lucky he's in on his back. Is all I got to say. This kid, Mario, this kid is I didn't hear you, Gary. What did you say? He's, he's lucky they don't have more depth because Mario. Yes, he's that. very lucky. Yeah, he's lucky. Mario hates that crap. I was. I was yeah, oh, yeah, he hates thing. it. I, I like this. I'd like to see Elijah Lofton get in there and play in this slot. Who's going to guard him? He's massive. You know, but he's another you know, one. I didn't even mention him earlier. Yeah, I mean, how much can that kid Why offer? Give him more time. Why not? You got nothing to lose at this point. But, but he's, he's one who, personal who could, foul away from no Superman. nobody could. He's massive. Did you see what he did last week? He got hit. He caught a ball. He got hit. He got up. I mean, he had. I think he had something with his hip. But I still. think I think next year when yeah, next they, year when they don't have Restrepo, that they'll be able to design more offense for guys like Elijah Lofton. Uh, you know, I'm ex that's what I'm expecting. Uh, you know, Restrepo, as good as he's playing, is just commanding so much. I just, again, I don't think he has to obliterate the record book. <laughs> like, let's get some of these other guys. I don't even know if, is he really thinking about the record? I don't even know if Cam's thinking about the Heisman. He, these he's guys just want to win. I just, yeah, I just, I just think that all the plays are going to Restrepo we, and, and we're winning, but I think we will be a better team if other guys get involved too. Oh, I don't know. And, all and, of and it. I, it just seems like all the big plays because everybody knows he's Mr. Clutch. We've been life or death to win these last two games. We can't yeah, forget we have, that. But it wasn't and, all and, on Restrepo. And, and you can't just you just you can't just blame the defense in my opinion. Right. right. Yeah. All right, real quick, do you think that the run game if if we could do something in a run game in the first half of these games? as opposed to waiting for the third and the fourth quarter to decide to do something that could help alleviate the problem as well. Cause I know no we're seven weeks, we're seven weeks into the season and I'm still waiting for Damian, the real Damian Martinez to stand up. To show up. Yep. They were doing it last week. They were committed to it. A cow. They didn't, they did not abandon it. Um, they were doing it and they gave up all those big plays and fell behind by 25 early in the third quarter. At that point, they had to abandon the running game. Yeah. And they, you know, but I think, they'll, I think they'll bring it back this Saturday. I do, because they we're were seven, they were effective. We got to see, see the Damian Martin. We have to see it. It's There's no more. 100%. Damian Martinez. It's seven weeks. We want to see that running back that, that UM paid that money for. 100 Here, Here's the voice of the fan. I don't give a damn about Martinez. I don't care about any of these guys. I want to win. And if he's not doing the job, I don't want to force him to play because we gave him NIL money. I don't care about him. I, I, Fletcher's better than him. He's, he's he is better. He, Fletcher can get to the outside. 
And we need to see a little more of Jordan Lyle. We need to see Chris Johnson in a worst way. He needs at least eight or ten touches a game. A couple out of the backfield. You could put him and in, 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 in Lofton in the backfield and let Lofton be a lead blocker. He was a lead blocker on a touchdown near the end of the game. That kid is very, very multidimensional. That's what they got to do. They just can't put hand the ball off to Martinez and hope he runs for 100 yards. I don't think that's going to change anything. Our speed will make changes with Louisville's defense. We have speed but we that we're not a, using. We got to scheme some plays for Chris um, for Chris Johnson. Yeah, we do. You know, we haven't schemed anything. But the problem, the problem is this: he's got to be in the game. He's got to be in the game, BK, when he's not getting the ball. I mean, the problem is every time he comes on the field, he's getting the ball, and now the defense knows that he's getting the ball. And until there's enough time to change that up. Okay. Well, guess what, Gary? Awesome. You know, uh, as an offensive coordinator, if I was that, I'd put him in the game. I'd fake a handoff to him or fake an end around to him and, and misdirect and throw it to somebody else. If you're thinking of that, don't, you think, don't you think Dawson should be thinking of that? I do. Dawson Imagine what Rhett Lashley would have done with Chris Johnson. Look what he's doing with Brashard Smith. Yeah. Ooh, I, oh, yeah. I mean, listen, uh, uh, Shannon Dawson is managing a lot. OK, but I agree with you that it would take a concerted effort to make sure Chris Johnson is in the game for plays where the ball's not going to the running back. Bingo. It's physically on the field where they're noticing him on the field and you're establishing a pattern that he's not going to get the ball every single time he walks out there. All right, BK, you got anything else for us? No, Gary, I'm good. All right, man. We'll talk All to you right, next week. Hey, talk Thank to you next everybody. week. Hopefully after another massive Canes win. Uh, nothing I would love to see more. I am expecting a shootout on Saturday. I I, I you know, I, I think Vegas did make the over-under 61 for a reason. And I think Louisville's strength does match up well for them with our defense. Um, all right, let's go to Sebastian, man. What, how are you doing this week, Sebastian? Center your center your picture a little bit for us. Okay, so we I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with my, I, my, my life. My life would not be complete if I didn't get to see that bald head every week. <laughs> so, so set, so set, center it for us. All right, there you go. Hey, there, go. Head now. there it is. All right. Better. What's up, man? Hey, man, I, you know, I'm thinking about this game, and this game is uh, is just huge for us. Uh, I, I, I did what Lance Gidry did last uh, 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 this week. I actually watched the game from last week when we played them. And, and I just thought that if you watch the game, I mean, we it seems like we had it in control in the first half. Um, I think we got up to like 21 to uh, 14. And then, you know, we didn't make a third down and Louisville drove the ball down the field and scored and missed the extra point. And then it was a 21-20 game. But yeah. here's what I also saw in the game as well. I thought the Louisville coach was very, very aggressive. Like, I mean, Louisville was 9-1. and one. I thought the Titans just absolutely killed us. But where they also killed us was they got into a lot of third and, sh third and short. And uh, we didn't have a lot of depth on the defensive line, and, and they were just eating us for lunch with misdirections and passes. And so as I'm thinking about Misdirections, Lance, taking about, advantage of over-pursuit. Yeah, absolutely. Over-pursuit, yep. our aggressive nature and everything, you know, bad eye discipline. And, and, and I'm, you know, I'm one of these folks that I just believe we get out of Louisville <clears throat> with a field goal game and win. That's enough for me. <clears throat> 100%. You know? Oh, I agree. I, I don't care that's how we win. Me. Just I'm, win, I'm baby. Not, I'm not into the style points and what Vegas says and everything. This is a good ball, ball club, regardless of what their records say. <clears throat> they probably well, they haven't played me. their best either. Like, yeah, they haven't played their best. Yeah. They, they, they probably scare me more than any other team on our schedule just because of how balanced they are on offense and defense. And I really think this is a game that's going to be won by the coordinators. I think it's going to be uh, Dawson and Lance Guidry. If, you know, if, if, because the talent, the disparity in talent is not such a huge gap that I don't believe that if Gidry is not on on that particular day, I think it could really haunt us. What are your thoughts about what are your thoughts about that, Bruce? But I'm but that's what I think about Lou. Well, I, I looked at I watched the Florida State SMU game and they were jacked for that game and they beat the daylights out of them. Then they go on the road at Louisville and I'm figuring they got to be exhausted. They can't be emotionally jacked up again. And guess what they did? They beat Louisville. And, and their speed showed. They Louisville looked like they were in quicksand covering these guys. 
So I look at I would look at those two films and look at the Louisville and Notre Dame because they didn't play well up there either. And I, I I don't think that Louisville has yet gotten their offense going. I don't know who they played before SMU. They played Notre Dame, and that's two losses that they had. They were not that impressive. And didn't they just beat somebody last weekend, um, like Virginia, by like a they couple, they, they, they beat by a couple Virginia, of points? They're, 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 they're not. They don't impress me. So I'm looking at Miami. If they play like they did against the Gators, and I have to believe because Gary knows Mario. I know Mario. I know the mentality. Last week in the press conference after the game, you know, he was talking. He wasn't happy. He wasn't happy after the Virginia Tech game, and they had a lot of soul searching. And these kids, according to him, are buying into what he's saying. They are making adjustments. They're making some changes. He's going to limit the number of players that are going to get in this game. He's not going to have 10 defensive linemen and eight defensive backs. He's going to restrict it to who has played well, who has done well in practice, and they're going to stick with those guys. Like They're going to throw in some wrinkles. They're going after their quarterback, but not all the time because they have to be worried about – this kid throwing screens. And you remember last week against Cal, the quarterback faked the throw to one of the receivers. Both of our guys came up and the I, I don't know, it was number 83. He yeah. just blew by everybody. Yeah, tied in. Yeah, I mean, you tied can't in. be doing that. That eye discipline is so bad. And if they're sitting there relying on our front four to, to make sacks and create havoc and they don't cover guys. But I got to tell you, I hadn't, I didn't remember seeing that many wide open receivers like I did in the last two weeks. Wide yeah. open. Yeah. Wide open. And so I know that Mario has done a lot to correct that. I think these kids are smart enough to self-correct. I just happen to think that this is like Florida all over again. Somebody's telling them you're not as good as you think you are. And I think they're going to come out and I think they're going to beat this team pretty badly. I do. Not 47 to 3, but I think they're going to beat them and control the game from beginning to end. I I I see I see us I see a field goal. I see us in the fourth quarter and and we drive able to drive down the field and I see a kick in a field goal and getting out of Louisville with a win and I'll be happy with that. How big of an impact do you think having Jalen Rivers come back to the starting lineup is going to have on on this particular game? It should be huge because, like, to me, if I'm looking at this game, I, I'm not disrespecting the Louisville offense the way some people are. And I'm thinking, you know, I need to control the rhythm of the game. Uh, and, and the way to do that is is by running the football uh, effectively like they were in the first half. All The only thing that went wrong at Cal was giving up the big plays on defense. Right. I mean, yeah. they, they were controlling the game. They were controlling the football. They were running the ball well. Um, they only scored 10 points in the first half. They had a couple third down conversions that didn't go their way, but they were executing what was a very sound game plan going up there to Cal. And um, I'm expecting very similar against Louisville. I, I, I think that you don't want to get let the Louisville offense get into a rhythm. And the way you keep them from getting into a rhythm is you keep them on the sidelines. And um, I think Miami will try to run the ball up there, and Jalen Rivers will, becomes a big part of that. Yeah, I don't know what was wrong with him, so I'm not sure how much he's really going to be able to play. He's been off for like six weeks already. So, But Mario did say that Bell will play in this game, so he'll probably go in there for a series or so and then give give Rivers a rest. I just keep thinking that Miami can't keep playing the way they did on defense the last two weeks in this game. I, I mean, they've had two weeks to get ready for this and make the adjustments. And so... You Just can't like, make an adjustment though to mental busts, and that's inexcusable. Well, they're working I mean, on they were working on the mental bust. I know they are. I'm telling yeah, you. They have to be. I mean, they have to be. And I just don't think Brom, Brom is gonna Brom is gonna throw up. I, one thing I can see when I watched that game last year, there was a lot of motion. He threw a lot at our team and our defense. And so he that is so what in. he threw a lot of misdirections. I mean, I don't know if you saw the tight end right. But, the touchdown right the tight end was incredible wrinkle, where he, get, he he posed as an offensive lineman and then snuck out and scored touchdown he threw an absolute lot here's what i'm really thinking about this game here i don't need cam ward to be great i don't need him to have any silly interceptions where he gives them extra possession i just think routine plays is going to win this game if they just execute just i don't execute. need him 
I don't, that need him right, to be a, I don't need him to be a superhero in this game. I, believe it or not, if he only throws for 250 yards, but we run for about close to 200, I'll be, and we win the game, I'll be happy with that. Of I just course. don't need him to be Superman in this game. And I'll I tell mean, you, as you watch this game on, on Saturday, if, if, if I get through the first quarter and a half and I see him trying to play Superman, remember this conversation – that I'm really, really worried about this game because I don't need him to be Superman. I need him to, if it's third and six, just get the first down. You know, I don't need a home run. I agree. I, need I, I don't think I don't think that he's going to throw that across the field pass ever again. That's one. <laughs> Two. There was a play a few weeks ago. He hit he hit a George right in his hands, and it popped up in the air, and it was an interception. That wasn't on Ward. Yes, it's an interception, right. but it wasn't his fault. And, and I think in the, in not in the, maybe not the Cal game, maybe the week, I don't remember. Yeah, the Vatek game. He threw one to Restrepo. It got popped in the air, and Caleb Spencer got it and almost took it to the house for a touchdown. But I don't know if that was his fault that the ball got popped in the air. But his weakness as a player is turning the ball over. And yeah. it, it has it has been his entire career. He's got to lose that. And and he's been coached well, to well, lose well, it. Well, here, here, here's what here's, he's, he's, he's thrown six interceptions this year. Okay. Three of his picks have been uh, – three of his interception has been like batted balls, tip balls. Right, or batted balls. And so what I mean by when I say he doesn't need to be Superman is sometimes don't get the big play. Just get the ordinary uh, check down plays and stuff like that and just keep the chains moving. Um, you look at – I mean, the Jacoby George interception, that was his ball. He, he threw a perfect ball. Yeah, perfect. Um, the one that you would be scrambled in the first week of the game when it comes off of a stepper, I think he's, you know, he's doing a lot. He's really trying to make a play. And the one against Caleb Spencer is a fluke. But if you take those away, he, he, he's, he doesn't seem as uh, turnover prone as possible. The point I'm just trying to make is I just don't need to be Superman in this game. I just need him to come out with a W and then we'll be fine. As you, I know we're going to close, tighten down the roster, but could we, could you tell me some, maybe some impact, uh, underclassmen that can have an impact on this game, some underclassmen that could probably possibly have an impact in this game, you know, like Zaquan Patterson or, you know, to help kind of help the secondary out because, you know, I mean, we need some help back there. And uh, maybe some like uh, Justin Scott, you know, a defensive lineman and maybe Popo Gary. I mean, or even on offense, JoJo Trader. Are there some young talent on the team that you think could help make a difference in this game? They're all going to play. I, I just think that in, you get into a game like this, and and I still think this is could be the toughest game of the year. Mm -hmm. I think I think Louisville had this circled for months. Uh, Brahm is going to be very prepared. Uh, I think you want to rely on your veteran football players in a game like this. Uh, I don't see yeah. Zaquan playing that much. He's on special teams. So are some of these other guys. They're on special teams. When you say these young underclassmen, look, I'd love to see the, the running backs just two of them that we really should have in the game, Jordan Lyle and obviously Chris Johnson. I still think that uh, Lofton should be in the game, not just two or three plays. He's just a mismatch, and, and, and I'd put him in there. I'd take George out and put him in there because he's he, he's tough. Um, but as far as the young kids, I, I, like I said, I know Mario's going to cut down guys that are on the fringe that aren't really playing now. And he said whoever does well in practice is going to play. So, I mean, he knows these guys better than we do. But I expect that the, the beginning of the game, we got to come out strong. We yeah. get the ball. We win the, we win the toss. We, we, we defer, whatever. But we got to stop them. We just need to jump on these guys. 10 nothing, 17-3. Like these other teams have done on us, only they're not coming back against us. I don't think so. But we got to jump out early. We cannot be stuck in quicksand once again in the first half of these games, which is what we've done. Let, let, let me share. Let me share something with you guys. Is my last thought. This game is huge for several reasons. Um, Louisville still has to play Clemson, and they still have to play Pittsburgh, and they mm -hmm. already have a loss to SMU. If we beat Louisville, you could pretty much take them out the running. Absolutely. To make it to the ACC championship. Game, Absolutely. All right. We don't play Clemson, and we don't play Pittsburgh. Right. Or or um, SMU. Or, or, or SMU. Or SMU. So they got to kind of fight it out on that particular end. We get past Louisville. We're still going to have a tough matchup against Tech. I think Tech is going to be a tough game. 
And I think Syracuse is going to be a tough game. And then you have, I think, Wake Forest, Duke, and Florida State. Um, I'm not saying those are cupcakes, but this is a way that you can kind of take that team out of play for the ACC championship game, right? And then you leave everybody else to kind of fight it out, and we're more in control of our destiny. The, the, the issue with losing this particular game is I think it puts so much pressure on all the other games that we have to play, what gives us a very, very small margin of error. And, you know, a couple of injuries here or there, it can kind of decimate your team. I mean, when we played Louisville last year, our defensive line was all banged up and bruised when we were playing Liechtenstein at defensive tackle. We didn't have the talent and the depth. Yeah, you're you're, you're, you're not wrong. Guys. That's why I also think we should beat these guys. They're not that I'm not as good as everybody thought they were going to be. Everybody was talking. They're undefeated. There's, game day is going to be there. You know, but they're not. It's a twelve o'clock game in Louisville. I see no reason why we should. Yeah, they're a they're a well coached team. I just don't think they have the talent both sides of the ball like we do. I just don't think they do. And if 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 we could lose, if we if we screw up. Like, we've screwed up the last couple of weeks, but if our heads are on straight and Mario's got these guys into this game, and I know these guys are going to go out there with a chip on their shoulder because they're pissed. They don't want to hear all this noise. Um, I expect us to win this game. And then Florida State the next week, you know, it's a rivalry hey, game. We'll talk about that next week, but still. I mean, hey, can't hey, Derek, answer this question for me, and, and then you can, you, can, you can turn me off. We can go next week. Um, you yeah. talked about Malachi Tony, and you talked about how you're probably optimistic that we can kind of get back into play with him and get him on board. Can you can you elaborate a little bit more on why you think we'll probably circle the wagons and kick the tires again, and why he's a focal point to get him in this particular class? What's I think going there, on there that we don't know. I think um, I think he's he's important to the class because you know they see him playing a future role like a Restrepo, uh, a slot receiver who who can be counted on. Uh, he's young. I don't know how fast it'll happen. You know, he, he's um, accelerating his graduation. Uh, he reclassified to this class, so he's going to be a year younger when he uh, when he gets to college. Um, I think he got a little caught up in recruiting. I think they've been in a really good spot with him for a long time. Um, I think that that when um, the you know what hits the fan, um, Kevin Beard's been spending a lot of time on this one. Uh, he was at his game last night, and um, I just, I just think that uh, Miami will get back in there here and 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 get this thing done in the next few weeks. Um, I'm expecting him to be part of the class. All right, Sebastian, awesome. let me let you go because I can't let Jake get drunk over there. He, I mean, he's been drinking the whole show oh, and uh, waiting patiently to come on. So uh, give us a call. Uh, come back on next week, okay? All right, sounds good, guys. Thanks. All right, Thank Sebastian. You, buddy. All right, Jake. Man. Like I, 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 I apologize. Like we, you know, I, I know you've been pasting oh, and, and, and eating and drinking and the whole thing, but uh, hope, fine. Hope, Make it better. I hope, yeah. I hope we got you on in time. What you got for us this week? We got, it, we still got a half a bottle, so we're good. So. There it is. What is that? What are you drinking? Oh, we got some my, my red wine for the week. So yeah, or the night. <laughs> it depends. That um, bottle won't last a week in your house, and you know it. No, no, it doesn't. No, no, that'll be lucky to make it till tomorrow. So <laughs> it's all right, though. That's good. Um, I think, uh, you know, I hope in this player meeting, the, the, the way I'm looking at it, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'll take the glass half full a little bit on the defense. Uh, we've got the number one defense, except for 10 plays this year, where they took really bad angles over pursued other than that it's dinking and dunking you know nobody's been moving the ball on us they just we get smacked with these 50 60 yard plays where it's just full-on over pursuit i think you know if they got in the lab and corrected that over this bye week we could be pretty formidable uh you know the secondary there's problems i'm not yeah, saying problems it's, uh, it's all rosy, but um, Maui Noah didn't forget how to play football. I mean, we, we, we've seen the guy play. He's had two really bad weeks mm -hmm. uh, over pursuing the ball, just missing a tackle that turns into a really big play. Uh, same thing, Mish Powell. I mean, you know, at, at this point, the guy's got a history. You know, he, is he a first-round pick? No. But he's a good football player, and he'll, you know, I, I think he'll figure it out. He had a good first four weeks, 
Granted, competition's not great, but you know, I, I think he'll he'll sort it out too. But um, the other thing too, somebody was saying earlier, I forget who it was, but you know, talking about the hero ball, and I think I look at it. The, there's some guys who you could tell. I don't know if it's maybe they're playing for their NFL career uh, or they think they are, but there's some guys who are playing the system. Mark Fletcher, Isaiah Horton, Wesley Besaint, Cam Ward, Xavier Restrepo. Those guys are going to the NFL, and the reason they are is they're just they're, they're working it. They're working it. They're not forcing it. Uh, you got guys like Tyler Barron, Francisco Maui Noah, Mish Powell. I wonder if to a degree they, they've gotten a little overzealous, if you will, trying to make that, that huge play. Uh, Sam Brown, you could toss him into that uh, category. Uh, you know, the, the, he's still dropping balls that he shouldn't be dropping. Yeah, I was, I was, I was all for him up until last week, but I get another couple of drops, and I don't know. Do you think there's some guys though that just like you know, they the, the, they got their eyes on the NFL, and it's like you know, just focus on the game, not the NFL. I, I don't think so. I don't think, I, I think they're problem. dialed in. I don't think they're thinking about that at all. I just don't think they've played their best. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, like I've said, I don't want to be a broken record. I, I think a lot more of them can be involved more often. And I think that'll help make this a better team. And um, I love the fact that they had the players only meeting. Um, Me too. You know, um, you know, Callie Kane was asking about that. I, I you know, I, th I think the players only meeting was a good thing because it shows us that they are not content with the way they've been playing. And uh, the want is there. They want to be better. They are not resting on any laurels because they shouldn't be. I mean, they easily could be a four and two team with its season derailed, kind of the way Louisville is, quite frankly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they they were they were expecting to compete for the ACC title this year, mm -hmm. and 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 you know they, they lost to SMU at home last week. That was a big that was a big loss for them. So uh, this is their Super Bowl. I think. They're going to get Louisville's best on Saturday. And, and uh, with all respects to Luis Delgadillo, who's like just destroying me in the chat uh, tonight, that I'm over, <laughs> over, oh, I'm over ranking Louisville or over respecting Louisville. Uh, listen, uh, I respect everybody. Uh, a lot of these teams have very good coaches and, and uh, they have good game plans. And you see the way we were pushed to the limit the last two weeks. And I know that this, this Louisville team is playing for its life on Saturday. And I know that they've had this game circled the entire offseason. So well, maybe, yeah. maybe we have them circled all offseason, except maybe uh, well, the state. that's I mean, that's the thing. You know, everybody was saying, you know, the, the, this game isn't sneaking up on us. No, right. not this at all. It's going to be a you you were talking, we're all in seven on the bye week. Now, I, I like so I made a prediction when we played Florida. I said either we're going to lose. Or we're gonna blow them out. Uh, I think this is the same type of deal, and I, I think two things. Number one, if we're playing well off the bye week, that means we started getting serious as a team. We started uh, uh, getting better on a bye week. How many for the last almost decade now? It's like yeah, the bye week, whatever. You know, it's actually a detriment to us. I, I think it, that that shows a seriousness, but but. This week is when we find out, is this team for real yeah. or were the last two weeks for real? Right? I agree with you a billion percent. We didn't play that well. I don't know what we were thinking. I don't know what happened. But if that wasn't a wake-up call, there won't be one. This yeah, is, yeah, no. We, this is we it. two weeks to fix it. So yes. either either the, the wake-up call happens or – yeah, we're probably ten and two. Uh, you know that that's that's just the reality of it. Um, we'll find out. Uh, you know, it's uh, four days away. I mean, we won the uh, last three games because South Florida was tough for a while, and then the last two games we pulled it out of out of a hat. But again, like I said, if this is the wake up call, there won't be one. Then, then they really might not be that good. Most of these people are saying we didn't play anybody. They might be right. So I'm expecting us to turn it around, and I can't change my opinion. I think we're going to beat them. I think it might be a tough physical game, but I still think we win by between 10 and 15 points. I don't. Yeah, think yeah, two, three I touchdowns. Don't I don't see it as a field goal game. I just don't. 
I, I think if it's a field goal, it's a loss uh, because then it, it, at, at that point, then that's three weeks in a row we right, have to yeah. buy to prepare. That's and, a great and, point. Yep. Yeah, well, we good. just didn't have the juice in this team. It's it's the Cam Ward show, and everybody else really wasn't able to step it up. Um, it's a great point, man. You go to the well three games in a row. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard to win all three of them. You are what you are at that yeah. point. You yeah, know, you got to like, yeah, you got to be better than that. You can say two great, weeks. That's, okay. That's the point of know. the night, Jake. Point of the night yeah. right. Um on a on a side point, we were talking about Sam Brown. Is he a junior? Could he come back next year? I think he's a senior. Martinez can come back. Martinez can come back. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, I thought he was a junior, and uh, yeah, no, I think Sam Brown. I, I like that idea of having the two big guys on the outside, just because uh, uh, you know behind them. I, I don't know how much else. And the the, the whole Jacoby George thing that that it's so mind boggling. I know it's been beat to death, but the kid's well, got obviously, NFL obviously Jake. It hasn't been. He's still doing it. <laughs> you could beat him up, but he's going to still do the same stuff. Hasn't anyone told him what kid? Oh, all right. Me, they told him. Told him. He's yeah. lucky they don't have depth. Bingo. He's lucky that Nycar and some of these other guys are not really would be over at Miami. For the kid's years. own sake, he is an NFL talent. He could play in the NFL, but no NFL team is going to draft him when he keeps doing this idiot shit week yeah. in and week out. Uh, you know, yeah, is he a first-round pick? No, but is he a fifth-round pick? Yeah, but when you get a personal foul every single week, they don't care if you have 900 receiving yards. You're a liability. And I, I, I just can't believe that somebody who's like a fringe NFL player, they can't get through to him and say, hey, like you're you're literally playing yourself out of the league. Well, maybe they ought to times... put him on the bench and let somebody else play and hope they win. I, I, yeah. I don't, he's not going to learn anything by continuing to play in these games. He's not. Yeah, no, no you know, doubt. Unless he, unless he stops it. But in defense of, of Horton, he was on the ground. The guy was not letting him up. It, the clock was running, and he wanted to get off. I thought so he put his foot up in the air to get the guy off him, and they called. Didn't him for they the pull the flag on that though? I, yeah, I they, called they, the, they called. They called a penalty on that. I don't yeah, think so. Get up, get the hell off of me! What he was pissed. Do you need to get back to the line. I, I right. mean, we were at the game. I yeah, I, I didn't see anything. You agree wrong with that, that then, right? I thought. Yeah, I thought no, that, that, I'm not I saying mean, it wasn't a penalty, but you know, get off. No, the if you're guy this guy off of you. trying to keep you on the ground, you're trying to get reset. That That's fine. I mean, you know, you try to have a little more restraint, but you got to get reset. And, hey, if a guy's pinning you, one or two seconds can mean the game. You know, in a game that tight, uh, I, no, I can't blame him for that. And, and, again, it's not problematic. It's not like this is every single week we're talking about, oh, Isaiah Horton, he's uh, – you know, he, he, he's played he's great. He's problems. been spectacular. I mean, some of these guys, and I think we said it last week, Gary. Um, these guys are baiting Jacoby. Oh, Jordan. it's now a game, plan. game plan, no doubt. They're baiting our guys to commit personal fouls. Yep, hundred percent. That's they, uh, they watched a lot of that thirty for thirty, and they know that we have an attitude. And so, if you're you know, to- it, it, we used to be able to. Uh, I wish we still could, but. Uh, you can't. It's just it's the rules. The rules are the rules. You know, uh, th- those are fouls that again. I wish we could play like that, but at the end of the day, uh, we know they're they're going to call them on us, and they're going to call them on most teams too. So it's not that's not one where they're they're singling us out. Oh. Um, what was I going to say? The uh, um, if you, I didn't watch that press conference on uh, that you, that you had up on Kane Sport, but it. Any any talk about you know giving some zone looks or just I like the aggressiveness. They haven't I don't said it, but I think they're, they're going to do it. They're not going to talk about that. They're not going to talk about that. Thematic stuff. They're not. There's not. You know, I mean, it's an obvious thing they got to be looking at. Yeah, they're going to yeah, be. I, I mean, I, I just, agree. Don't don't loosen up too much, but just just enough so that if there is a missed tackle, it's not sixty yards yeah. open field just, behind them. I just don't know? want Lance Gidry to go soft. That's not Lance no. Gidry. The, no, you know, I, but, people but say like, just so rush for things like that. Like I, I just said, I yeah, that, that's Lance at, at, at that Cal game, uh, there were times where it just seemed like the defense was was vertical across the field. Where like you had eleven guys across the line of scrimmage, and there was nothing behind it. Yeah, like and, like 
like like to me that wasn't about home and bone. Right. That was about guys knowing their assignments and executing them. Yeah, and yeah. and and we didn't look prepared on defense the way we need to be in that game. The, you hey, know, hey, Gary, your buddy Honey Give is blaming it on Kevin Beard. He can't control George. <laughs> it's near. The, it's one of the more recent comments. But come on, man, it's it's not Kevin Beard. No, I mean, uh, well, uh, again, that should be Jacoby George. You want to play in the him. NFL. Don't do stupid shit. It's a pretty easy equation. I mean, <laughs> you got the talent. He put up 900 yards last year. He probably could do it this year. But they're but baiting him. They're probably cursing at him when they're in those every tackle. You're a piece, you're this, you're that, your mother this. I'm sure. Yeah. And he, and he goes for it. He gets up swinging. He's just got a chip on his shoulder. He's got to contain it. Just walk yeah. back to the huddle and shut or up. Catch a touchdown. That's the best way to. Right. Throw yep. in someone's face. Score. All right, Jake. So before we let you go finish that bottle of wine, uh, anything else you got for us tonight? No, no, that's it. That's it. I, you know, I'm, I'm, right, I'm thinking man. we're in the 40s this weekend, and uh, I'd like to see the defense step up, hold them in the uh, – Are you worried team. about this game? What do you think the score is going to be? Uh, personally, I think it'll be 45 to 17 or so. Um, I'll take it. <laughs> take that. Take it. I'll take it. <laughs> if 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 we are for real, um, I think we we beat them down pretty good. Yeah, I agree. If we're not, we lose, and right. and we go ten and two the rest of the way. Uh, well, we that, might not beat them down. We could win the game, but we might not play well again. It could be 38, 36, 38, 30. Who knows? I don't think so. I don't again, think so either. Though. Protect the football. Protect the football. Three times in a row. Three times in a row, and you are what you are. Like we're just. And above it, not not we're not same plus same, but we're an above average team. Yeah. But we three close games in a row like that, three nail biters. I'm sorry, you can't. And, you're and not they can't jump. They can't times. jump on us, and the crowd will be in it, and it will start in the first quarter. We're down. No, we have to come out ready to play right from the oh, yeah. jump. Like Florida, come out, score 17 in the first 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Put them on the ropes, and if we do that, I think we. I think we beat the crap out of them. So I we'll see. see. All right, Jake. Oh, so, so, salute, man. Salute. <laughs> salute. <laughs> see you next week. I'm drinking, I'm drinking um, easy water. <laughs> seven twenty. Yeah. Seven twenty-seven. Kane. Like, I got it. Like, just because we respect an opponent and we recognize that an opponent can do some things, also doesn't mean that we don't believe in this team. I mean. You know, we believe this team can go undefeated this year. I mean, we absolutely believe in this team. But we've been life and death to win two weeks in a row. I mean, you have to respect that, that we have not been playing the best that we can play. And you have to respect, you know, that you're playing this week against a good coach that does have some players too. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens there. All, right, all things be equal, I agree with that, except for the mm -hmm. fact we're coming off those two games and they've had a bye week to correct some of the mistakes. And it just seems to me that he's got their full attention, unlike in the last 10, 15 years where the coaches didn't have our full attention the, of the players. And I think this time they're going to go out there and show everybody that those two games were flukes. Hopefully. The Louisville defense can be had. So ho hopefully yes. uh, hopefully it all comes together. I, I want to go to uh, K-Mac. I believe he's a first-time um, visitor on, a, on our show, um, audio only. K-Mac, welcome to Kane Sport Live. Hey, what's going on, Gary? What's going on, Bruce? How y'all doing? How you doing, K-Mac? What you got hey, for doing, doing pretty good, man. I um, First off, Gary, I want to say uh, I agree with both of you guys. Elijah Lofton needs to play. I, I don't know how you get him in the game, but you got to get the kid in the game. He's the he too talented. You have to change the offense to do it because he's he's really like an H-back fullback, which they don't use a lot. Um, yeah. They use it on the goal line some, but... Gary, he caught, a pass, he caught a pass 17, 18 yards down the field. That wasn't coming from the backfield. He can no. get down the field. He can run. We've seen him. Yeah. But We've seen him, and he can do a lot of damage, and he's, he's a mismatch. Yeah. What? Yeah, five to ten packages I think you can find to, to get him in the game and and uh, just utilize that talent, man. I mean, get, he has too much not to get something out of him. Free. Oh, um, free, man. Yeah, absolutely. You can build an offense around that guy. Absolutely, and and hopefully, you know, past this year, maybe we'll be able to get to that. Um, the other point I want to make or or get to, um, I also agree with you, Gary. I, I know you might be getting some flack. You you got to respect your opponents. I mean, if, if for nothing else, these kids all work out. They 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 blood, sweat, and tears. 
They work out all the time. They're studying their playbooks as well. They got coordinators that get picked. You got to respect the effort that, you know, these kids, you know, what they put into this game when they come into a, a football game, they believe they're going to win just like anybody else. And when you start to not think that they want to win like you do, I think that's when you get into trouble. Ask Alabama, do they respect Vanderbilt now? You know what I mean? Ask them, do they, you know, do they give them the respect when they walk to that Vanderbilt game? They, you, you can tell that the kids thought they were just going to walk all over these guys. And they're like, eh, we got something for that. Um, you you got to respect your opponent. You, plus, you're on the road. Um, a lot of things that go with it, man. But just the blood, sweat, and tears. You respect the effort that you know the, these other kids are putting in on the sideline. As a football player, if you played the game, you know what it takes to put in there. You, you, you got to give that respect regardless. Then you let your play do what it does. Talent and coaching is what makes the difference. But everybody puts in the same effort, man. Guys work hard for this. Would you but agree amazing, that Mario has their attention after the last two weeks and he had a week, an extra week to get ready for this game? Would you no agree doubt. he's got their attention, don't you think? No doubt. There, there's no doubt I expect him to come up with an effort. Um similar to Gainesville in that first week. There's no doubt I expect them to come out guns blazing, but I also don't think that they're going to walk into that Louisville game not respecting who's across the sideline. Um, Brom, is, Brom is a hell of a coach, man. They were in the ACC championship last year. We weren't. You know what I mean? You got to respect that. The, the guy knows how to coach, especially on the offensive side of things. Um, if nothing else, I mean, that might keep it a little bit close, but I'm hoping it's a, a double-digit win. But the main thing I wanted to call about was, was the Cam Ward kind of conundrum that we have right now. Um, I know I heard you earlier, Bruce, I'm like, you know, somebody saying they don't want to see Superman um, and things like that. And I agree 100 percent. I, I would love to see Cam Ward with 250 in the touchdown and, 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 you know, 200 yards rushing and all that grand stuff. You want to see the Superman and when it's absolutely necessary. But other than that, I would like to see more of a full team effort. Yes. I want to see everybody what, involved. Yes, K-Mac. That's what makes you ready for the end of the year. Absolutely. And, and what, Yes, sir. And I think, Gary, what we're looking at, and I, and I sense your frustration, and I, I watch you and Matt every morning, man. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. It really is. <laughs> but I sense your frustration, and, and I think what you – I think hopefully I can phrase it the way I think that you're trying to come across. When you think about – first of all, Cam, I, I'll never say Cam Ward is the greatest uh, Miami Hurricane quarterback in history. I think that's crazy to say something like that when you think about the history behind it, the guys that laid the foundation, what they mean to that program – I don't think you can you you really want to compare those two things. Do a respect and what he's doing absolutely. Love what he's doing. We've never had a quarterback like Cam Ward. And I think it's something for us to enjoy. I don't think we need to talk about greatest ever and all those things, but here's where I think the difference is between a guy like a Cam Ward and and, and even a Peyton Manning and a Tom Brady. Right now I think the guys are waiting to see what Cam Ward do or does instead of joining him in making things happen. They're waiting for Cam to be the one to, and I think it's all the spotlight right now that he's getting in. And, and I love it. It's bringing notoriety to the program. It's bring you know, eyes are on the Miami campus. We got a Heisman favorite. It's all beautiful. But at the end of the day, you have to join him with what he's doing, not watch it, spectate, and then expect him to bail us out when we get into trouble because you've watched and spectated the whole game, you got to get involved. You got to say, Hey, rally the troops, get around them. Say, Hey, we're all great. When you look at Ken Dorsey, Andre Johnson didn't look at him in awe. Andre Johnson said, give me the ball and let's both look good. Or let's let our team look good. You didn't see Clint Portis sit there in awe of, of, of Bryant McKinney blocking for him. He joined, I'm taking advantage of, he's open the holes. Let me go and let me get they through those holes. opportunities. Absolutely. And you get those opportunities because you utilize the skill and the specialty and the talent of the guys around you, not watch it in hope that it carries you through. Do your job to the best of your ability and feed off of what they're doing, but don't let it be a spectacle that you're just watching and not able to get out there and do what you're supposed to do. And I think that's what's happening. I think these guys, the, the defense is looking at and expecting Cam to go out and throw a touchdown every, you know, every time he's out there. And no, there's nothing wrong with turning around and handing the ball off and letting the offensive line maul people for a quarter and a half if, if necessary. Do I want to take the ball off Cam more hands? No, absolutely not. But let it come within the flow of the game versus making it 
the flow of the game. But here's my point on that. I, I agree to a great extent. However, the guy sees things that people just don't see. He's reading defenses. He's he's changing plays at the line of scrimmage. He's a step ahead of everybody else. He is a major film rat, and he, he's very hard on himself. And he doesn't like when he makes mistakes. And I'm sure these last 10 days he's been in that throne room every day watching what he did wrong, not just the film on the Louisville defense. So, yes, you'd like to run the ball. You'd like him to throw for 200, 250. But if they're taking the run away, and you got to throw the ball. You got to do what's up there in front of your eyes. And he sees things that I don't see. And he's just that smart. So I, I can't really fault him for being that great of a player because he is. And everybody has been reaping the benefits. Horton, um, the other receivers on the team, Restrepo, the tight ends. They're all involved in this. They're not not involved. They're not watching him. Maybe the defense is, is watching him because, holy smokes, look at this guy. So the defense is not the offense. They need to be able to play as a unit, more so than maybe the offense. There's no Jeromes out there. There's no Cortez. You know, they don't have that. They have good players that have to play well. But I don't know if the defense, Gary, is the defense sitting around and watching him? I don't think so. They're in their own little individual no, huddles. No, but I get, I get what k Max saying. And, and, yeah, I agree. And, and, and to me, that's that that – that is just a different way of saying what has been my real point this entire week is, is that I, I think that if you if more guys are involved on a regular basis, that that will alleviate that problem. Um, you know, I want to see other guys impacting the game. Uh, I, I I feel that even though there are there are some stats there, uh, for the most part, we are the Cam Ward Restrepo show. And they're like, like I said, they, they are obliterating the record books if they continue this and that's all great. But I understand how good of a football team we're going to need to be in another month. Okay. To, to beat the teams that we're going to potentially, if we keep winning, be asked to compete against. And it, it, it's a two man game is not going to get it done when you get I don't to that. Think it, I don't think it's a two man game at all. Look at, look at the year Arroyo's having, look at some of these other guys, but Bruce. They, but if, these guys are putting season, up numbers. Gary, See, Gary. Bruce, look at all the players. Wait a minute. Look at all the players that have come through this program. The numbers that these two guys are putting up are so out of this world in relation to all of the great players that have come here in the past. And the reason for that is because there were multiple studs that were sharing the the load. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't just about Andre Johnson. It wasn't just about Clinton Portis. Uh, you know, as great as yeah, those guys they had, were. They, you know, look at the guys they had. Even Michael look Irvin, he's a Hall of Famer now. When Michael Irvin played here, it wasn't just about him. Of course not. But these yeah, other guys. That's what I think we got to get back to to be the best we can be at the end of the year. All right, here's my point. I, yeah. My counterpoint is this. There's been six defensive coordinators so far this season against us. How many of them have designed a defense to stop Restrepo? If they they're haven't. designing it, it ain't working. So why, why would you go away from that? This If, if they start they stopping haven't. him or double teaming him, that's another story. He's yeah. always open. What do you I want from the kid? He's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Yeah, no and argument. So is the quarterback. But, but we're, not playing, we're not playing Texas either. <laughs> you know, right. so you know look we're, at, we're look not, at we're not playing the level of teams that we got to play at the end of the year. Gary, 18 players have receptions. SP1 Worrell. Just, yeah, just, I just put it I'm, on there. 18. Oh. I understand. Okay. I understand. But, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, listen, I know that there's stats. Okay. We're running a lot of plays. There's stats. Isaiah Horton has 31 catches. Sam Brown has 21 catches. Jacoby George has 21 catches. I get it. Um, but I want to see more. I want to see more Arroyo. I want to see, I just want to see a little bit more when the game is on the line. Uh, because I think that's going to be important down the road. Maybe I'm crazy. I, I you crazy, know, but maybe Arroyo's in there to help block. And those but, games but, but, this but game. my 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 point my point is I respect and understand the, that the level of competition is going to go up substantially when we start getting to Clemson and Texas and those types of teams later in the year. They're going to be unlike anything we've seen this entire season. I personally think we need to be a little bit more well-rounded offensively to be ready for that 
Now is the time to start working towards that. That's just my opinion. Okay, that's why, that's why I want to see our other the speed backs get in the game too, because that helps too. One hundred percent. Right. Okay. Now, I'm gonna get that in a minute here a little bit, but K Mac, anything else for us tonight? Yeah, no, and I agree with you guys, man. I, you guys make valid points. Uh, again, I I think the the world roundedness would would help. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying uh, 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 strip Cam down or or not allow him to be or or the, you know the abilities that he has allow him to do. <clears throat> I have no problem with what he's doing at the line of scrimmage in terms of seeing sometimes. But he's not. He's also not audible into the right play every time either. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that every time he audibles, it has to necessarily be a pass play. Uh, I, I think defenses are backing off enough where he can, you know, uh, check down or, or audible to a, a, a draw play. Um, you know, when you see the linebackers are dropping out of there thinking that he's going to pass it pretty much every time he audibles, he goes to a pass play. And I think everybody knows that. And, and, and so I think we can make some adjustments there as well. But again, for me, what is the your whole, opinion of the offensive line blocking for the run this year. Have you, have you I, I think really I, I, yeah, it's right. been a close. It, it is not up to par. It is okay. not absolutely yeah, not up so, to par. So, do you blame Cam Ward for checking out of some of those things when he sees seven or eight in the box? I don't, and he sees a run. They call the run. Of course, well, I not. think he's got to do what he's got to do. Well, I think at that point, as the leader of the team, I think he needs to look at those guys in the face and challenge them. I think he needs to challenge them. That's his. That that's what the leader of the team does. That's what yeah. the quarterback does. Uh, yeah, it's, I want to see the damn offensive line win one of these too. games. That's, I do too. I don't want it to get in their face. Yards, run that's the ball what's going to prepare this team for for December. Right. You remember when he was pointing at the line and telling them where we're running the ball? That's what we need. Tell those guys. Look, yeah. I can uh, let me count on you so much that I can tell people where we're running. They can't stop you. Make them believe when he speaks. People listen. Make them believe. Get those guys involved, man. You got to look, turn around, grab Martinez in his face mask and tell him, come on. I saw what you did at Oregon State up close and personal. I know what you can do. You're not a bum. Come on, let's go. I think though that's where I would like to see the Cam Ward, not just the, the boosting of himself or, or you know, his celebration after the touchdowns, but get in people's faces, challenge them. They're, the guys will listen to him. The listen, guys will they, listen. They have committed to Damian Martinez. He's getting... Uh, but he's literally got du- almost double the reps of Fletcher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have yeah. committed to him. Um, yep. they, he's got to get going. Uh, yeah. That, or, or that won't continue. He, he, he you know, he he's got to get going. Um, all right. K, uh, K Mac. Uh, hey, great call, man. I hope you be part of the show more often, man. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Go Kings. Go you got Kings. It, man. Yeah. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to. That's gonna, a good callers tonight, Gar. We are. They're great. Um, yep. I want to put this comment on the screen. I hope I, I, I hope he's not going to get in trouble for this. But um, it's AJ Allen's dad. Okay, it looks like I believe that you know he says he's senior, not not junior. Okay, um, his son, when he's had opportunities to play, has been unbelievable. And and uh, you know it, it hasn't been in the crunch time of games. You know there are guys ahead of him, and you know it's hard to argue with the pecking order. Um, you know, but I but I said a few weeks ago, and I will say it, and that's if that's really his dad. To me, he's the he's the most all purpose back on his team, blocking, running, and catching the ball. He has the most overall talent. Most of the other guys are pretty one dimensional, and he should but, be in the game more. He's damn good. Yeah, um, you know, listen, I watch practices. J- Jordan Lyle did beat him out. Okay, there, there's no unfairness going on. Um, I, I hope that AJ Allen sticks with this thing. Uh, he's a redshirt sophomore. Um, he, you know, he, he's a, he's he's developing great. Uh, it's just it's a crowded position right now. It, right. it just it it it, it just is. Um, but it, it goes along to my point. Like these kids are starving to freaking co- contribute, man. Mm-hmm. Like like you know you're here. We're hearing from his dad, but like these kids are starving to. And and they've put in the work. I mean, AJ Allen's a much better player this year than he was a year ago. And um, you know, he made he made some great plays. He jumped over one guy. Yeah, and he was great in the Clemson and, game. And you know, last year he, he was called on a little bit, and he and he did well. He's 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 way better player this year than he was last year. Um, you know, Jordan Lyle has the potential to be a Clinton Portis, Willis McGahee. And maybe H. A. Allen eventually will too. But like the the point I'm making is that no, there's no nothing's unfair here. Um, but you, what you're seeing is like th- there are kids up and down this roster that are dying to contribute to the end result. 
and mm-hmm. they're good enough to do it. And it's the collectiveness of them all, in my opinion, that is going to make the Miami Hurricanes a very a team that nobody is going to want to play in December if they can keep cultivating this and and keep figuring out ways. And it's a big challenge for Shannon Dawson, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you got you know AJ Allen, you got a, a Lofton. Uh, you've got a lot of, you know, Chris Johnson, you've got a lot of really talented kids that are in that room that are capable of impacting victory on Saturday. And you're trying to figure out ways to get them all involved. And, you know, you bring Christopher Johnson on the field and everybody knows he's getting the ball. I mean, this is a tough deal for Shannon Dawson, man. I mean, but it's it, a good it problem really, to really have, really Gary, because we haven't had this kind of depth and talent in years. It, it it is, but you got kids that are starving okay. to do it on Saturdays, and and I just hope they get a chance. Okay, like I don't have to see Cam and Xavier annihilating the Miami record books while some of these other guys aren't getting to do a whole heck of a lot. I, I just hope it balances itself out here the second half of the year. Uh, I know I'm ruffling some feathers and 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 being out there a little bit. Uh, it's just my observation. Um, hey, look look am, look at tw- two thousand and one when they had. McGahey, Portis, and Gore. Who's the second leading rusher in the history of the National Football League? Frank Gore. Frank behind, Gore. behind Emmett Smith. That's unbelievable. And he was third 100%. string. That's, that's a talented team. And they all had to wait their turn. Yep, they all had to wait uh, their turn. But, but you know, it's uh, – I don't know, man. I don't know. It, I just I, – I see – listen, the coaches, to just try to sum it all up, have done a, a phenomenal job of building this roster, developing these kids, you know, the, 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 the training, the, I think the coaching has been upgraded a lot since Mario first got here. Um, but we're still winning games by one, you know, by the hair of our chinny chin chin, like we have the last two weeks. So right. when I look at this, I'm saying, how can we get out of that cycle? Um, and I think it's be by becoming more diverse, by being more, uh, um, well, I guess diverse is really the word, um, right. being able to uh, equally, with equal effectiveness, running the ball and throwing the ball so defenses can't hone in so that when we play the better teams at the end of the year, that there's no tendencies that they can key on. And yeah, feel free to double check, double cover Restrepo if you want. Yeah, um, good luck, but, right. But but I've got Horton and and Sam Brown and George over here who have done it, who are used to doing it, who aren't going to choke in the big moments, and mm-hmm. and 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 we're going to beat you over there. Um, so I just see so much. What you're seeing from me is passion because I don't think this team has even begun to become what it can be, and they're running short on time now. Mm-hmm. And 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 I hope they get there. And I hope they do it because they are not close to peaking and they're 6-0 and and number six in the country. Bruce, that's my parting thoughts for tonight. Uh, I, I echo those sentiments. I think that uh, – sentiments. I think that they they come c- come out this week and beat Louisville and play very well and tighten up all those mistakes and things they were doing, win by one or win by 20. I think that's a big game for them. They, they, they tightened it up. They're all – look, we've been saying since – bring that they're all in on Mario. They're all in on Mario. I mean, maybe a couple of guys here and there who might not play, but they're buying into what he's doing. The coaches are doing a much better job. I I can't explain how we got outscored 35 to three, and I might not ever in my lifetime, but we did. Now we have to learn from it. And now we have to take it out on the field up there in Kentucky and beat these guys and go seven and oh, and get ready. It's one game at a time. And I, I do think they have the potential to run the table. What happens in the playoffs, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of damn good teams. But a lot of those teams have losses already. Shockingly, they have losses. Look at Vanderbilt. They won again this week. They, did they beat Bama? Who did they just beat the other day? They beat somebody else that was pretty good. They're, they're, these teams that could just beat anybody. Oregon beats Ohio State. They beat Virginia Tech earlier in the year. Yeah, yeah. Virginia yeah. Tech's not a bad team. We just... We beat them, but they're not bad. You know, we'll see a little bit more about Duke because they play Florida State to, um, Friday night. I don't know who to root for. I, I, I normally would root for Duke. That would be very interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, interesting. But, you know, I'm thinking if Florida State upsets them, they may, they may come here thinking, well, we have nothing to lose. We could beat Miami. If Duke beats Florida State, they're probably going to show up down here and say, how much are we going to get beaten by? So, but it would be good to see Duke win and us play Duke down here and get some revenge on them too because they we owe them. We owe, we owe a lot of teams. We owe Louisville. Last year's game was horrible. Those two guys collided and they, and they ran for a touchdown. That was terrible. All right. Well, thank you. I, I want to thank everybody that participated in tonight's show. Great, go, great show, guys. Um, let's thank Caneswear for being the presenting sponsor of the show. Again, you can um, check out their store, 2655 South University Drive in Davie. They got everything the Canes fan could possibly want. Um, so go check out Caneswear. If you can't get to the store, caneswear.com. Uh, program note tomorrow night, we've got the Lamar Thomas show. We'll be back. Uh, make sure you come back and uh, the LT shows. I don't know if, if all you guys have been watching it this year. It's really been good. It's uh, it, it's it, it's a it's a great couple hours of entertainment. So hopefully you can make it back tomorrow night. Um, beyond that, all you guys that are traveling to Louisville, I will see you up there on Saturday. We'll be back here next Tuesday night on Kane Sport Live. To uh, I'm going to ask Brett if they have a straight jacket and a muzzle. We can put it on number three on our wide receiver because <laughs> he's got to stop that stuff. They have yeah. everything. They may have a straight jacket and a muzzle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you next time.